welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only, the human turret, the world champ himself, one of the best ARs to ever do it. Give it up for Sam LaRue, a.k.a. Octane. We got some of the best analysis in the building, the world champ himself, Christopher Duarte Parasite. We got the multi-world champion, the multi-champion, a legend, an icon to the Call of Duty community. Give it up for Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aches. And then, of course, we got the one and only, the executive producer of The Flank. Give it up for Ben J. Nice. And today's episode of The Flank is presented by Xfinity. You want the fastest, most reliable internet? You guys know what to do, man. It's the best in the business, and we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for them. So huge shout out to Xfinity. They've been absolutely incredible. So huge shout out to them. Gentlemen, how we doing, man? A crazy championship Sunday. I'm, listen. I almost had a heart attack like five times today. I'm gonna just gonna straight up say. I mean, Tom was is, stressing, bro. I was stressing, man. I was stressed you out. You guys me for having gray hair. Tom, you have gray hair I, soon. I was losing you composure. Had, you had Phase Black in the Challenger Finals. You had Phase in the Grand Finals. Yeah, the you were. You're going so, through it. Uh, little little stat for you guys. Major one, Phase Black got first in Challengers, and Phase got second. Major two. Uh, Phase Black got second in Challengers, and Atlanta Phase got first. So it's a little bit of a switcheroo there. Thought it was uh, interesting. Also, Phase Black was up 3 0 in the grand final, and we uh, got you got, we don't care about got that. Nikki D. We got Nikki D. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Nikki D. Phase is running uh, Challengers and the CDL yeah. grand finals. Yeah. And we're doing our thing in CSGO as well. We're doing yeah, our just thing. Just qualified for the, the Just qualified in CS. Phase, uh, Phase Esports is uh, is going crazy. Go you follow the app Phase Esports handle as well on uh, on Twitter. Can you watch some CS on me this week? Was this, of course. Was this event Phase's 50th? Is that what I think I saw? The 50th championship, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, as an org? Ah, yeah. damn. I don't even know. I'm not even sure. You know, 100% is their 50th. <clears> for <throat> sure. Yeah, I don't know, but... Crazy day, matches, Sam. How you doing Crazy. today, bro? You doing I'm, good? Dude, I'm I'm feeling fantastic after today. My my heart rate was elevated. Crazy, I, I don't man. know how everyone in chat and just in general watches this for fun. Like I was, I competed and it was less stressful than I was watching a series today. Like, yeah, the, the games were nuts. Just a little heads up, guys. Atlanta Phase might be pulling through. If we do do that, you guys can stay in the mic. We'll just switch over to the full cam and we'll bring them all on on the couch. I don't know if they're pulling. Yeah. Through. Uh, I don't know. It's either they are. Kason might be bringing them. I don't know. I'm not really too sure. But if they do, just a little heads up but pat how you doing today man long day of cod pat you were in there watching with us uh how i'm did doing you great I, I you know I've, I've i've talked about this for a long time uh you know in the top four mat battle it's, it's it's a good a good day um you know we didn't have to deal with any of those bad matches that we all know exist um but we got good four teams battled all day and and I, some good series in the grand final but uh Superstars came away with it, Tom. Yes. Uh, very, 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 uh, I mean, kind of yes, kind of yes, but uh, very, very long day. Ben, you doing all right? You doing good? Yeah, I mean, listen, you said today was excellent. I think this whole tournament, you know, once we got going to the business end was, was excellent. I thought especially the weekend was good. We had some great matches on Friday. We had some surprise top six teams. And, you know, what we wanted to see, the top four ballot out to see who ended up on top. And then, you know, Atlanta Faze ended up being – you know, the team atop the pile and excited to do it all again in about, what, six, seven weeks in Toronto? Uh, yeah, we have uh, the next major in Toronto. Around. Yeah. Obviously, there's been some rumors with major four. Harder than um, that, right? But we're about to get into, like, an, uh, uh, so there's a break, obviously, a couple of weeks. And then uh, we're going to get, like, 11 straight weeks, 11 straight weeks, I think, or 12 straight weeks of, like. I think it's eight uh, weeks away, Ben. Eight weeks away. So we have two-week break, yeah, eight. qualifiers, the major, and then we go back into qualifiers and another major, so. Damn, two, uh, two months. We'll be in Toronto. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a movie. Yeah, for sure. What's <laughs> everybody spamming? Draws. Oh, you tweet. should go look at his bio. It's good. Uh, what's his bio? Tw Bro, he put CEO of Optic at his Professional bio. Professional Call of Duty player for Atlanta Phase 2022 Call of Duty World Champion, CEO of Optic, and he added. He put the at in his <laughs> he fucking puts CEO. His bio. What's wrong? What's wrong with this guy, man? What's wrong with this guy? I mean, he's definitely. Dude. Listen, I, I will say this weekend, the the body shooting and the shit talk from everybody was That's fucking good. phenomenal. I mean, you gotta yeah. think Pat just lit him on, just lit him up, right? Hey, I saw Celium shooting bodies. I heard Draza talking. Think. I love it. I love. I mean, look, these guys need, have bro. the talent. I've been wanting these guys to act like this for a long time. Like, and and I I, I hope it's working for him. Uh, it's not, it looks like working. it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad uh, he may be CEO now. He might have more ownership <laughs> than than other CEOs. So but, I like it. I love it. Duarte, how you doing? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing great. And had a great weekend of Call of Duty. Had a great weekend of music. Um, I'm just grateful that I got to be out here. And it's all thanks to 
my boy Tom over here, Faze, Xfinity, and all of you, obviously all of you guys at home. So thank you guys. Seriously, yeah, thank this you was amazing. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a pleasure. it's a pleasure, guys. But guys, we're not going to waste any time. Let's hop into the matches and recap what happened today. First series of the day was the New York Subliners going up against Toronto Ultra. This one ended up being a 3-0 sweep for the New York Subliners. Let's scroll down and take a look here at the stats. Pretty balanced on both ends. Definitely think New York had uh, more damage and probably outslayed them a little bit. But uh, a rough a rough day here for, for Insight. Uh, tough matchup. Envoy stepped it up today, which was good to see. But uh, I think we can all agree that Toronto Ultra, just how they looked going into Major 1, just even throughout the stage, I was saying it online, they just haven't been looking like themselves. And I think it showed this weekend. I think this weekend you, you can see that, um, you know, they clearly – weren't what they were when uh, they were at Major 1. And obviously, I think they can get back to where they were, but it, just this stage, they haven't seemed like themselves. But, Whoa. Sam, we'll start with... Did they play with... one series? Uh, that to, was 4v4? Today? Yeah, I, I mean, this whole weekend, I don't think they, they had one, one series that was 4v4, series. bro. They had, Envoy uh, had a point five. The Insight had a point. Like, they literally played 3v4 in every series. Yeah. Envoy and yeah, there Insight, was a, everybody, there was they couldn't a, fry there was together. Yeah, yeah, I was, was going to say, event. Envoy and Insight had a really rough event. But, um, I mean, my thoughts just, like, going forward for this team outside of their matches today is, like, this map pool change that we're going to be potentially getting um, with Vista and what's the other one? Departure potentially Archer. coming in. And I don't even know. Maybe another map because I think the season, um, like, season two is going to end and more maps are going to come into the pool really, really soon, like, probably in a couple of days. And we have a pretty long break. So I'm curious if they are going to even test even more maps because there could be a big map pool switch up. I'm hoping for one because I'm tired of seeing Invasion Hardpoint, Invasion Control, all that nonsense. Uh, but that's going to be big for these guys because that's been the story for them this uh, entire major split. They just really struggled to find an S&D that they could lean on outside of Karachi, but that didn't bode well with their matchups yeah. um, in the tournament. So yeah. we'll see how this uh, you know that, 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 that develops for them. Uh, you yeah. guys think there'll be a fight between all the teams? Of like Map which pool? maps to take out and put oh, in? Yeah, of yeah, I think there will be. Yeah. There will, I, I think I think they'll all agree on Vista. Departures will be a weird one. I, I think Vista's know. in. Vista I, I, coming I in. Think is the issue, for what what map it is, whether yeah. it's sub base or invasion. I would say I think the issue is sub base or invasion, the politics of that rather than versus departures and. Um, that's why I'm praying that there's more maps that come in with the season because there is ample time. So maybe we can test those as well. And then yep. even improve the map pool further because I personally think, at least on the hard point front, invasion and sub base are both fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just gonna Skid go Row his ass, bro. Like if you ask Toronto, they're gonna want to take out Skid Row. Skid Row's not too bad. I don't, I don't mind Skid Row that much. I still think that Skid Row needs a hard point movement. I think the spawns got better with the new patch, but the the, the hard point like positions for at least P2. I mean, people have been breaking. I mean, like people have been stuff. breaking P2, bro. People it's gonna get worse. Um, with the new patch, like hard, it's gonna be harder to break because you're mm. gonna spawn like super far oh, away. Yeah, so super I think there's like a spawn like in P3 now, so you just spawn. It's like it's like the P5 spawn where okay. you spawn by the blue doors. You're just spawning deep as fuck. Yeah, you spawn deep as fuck. So okay. it's just gonna to get even harder. More. But yeah. I, I agree. With, I mean, it's, it's tough, man. Skid Row use some adjustments, but you know, and we talked a lot. Invasion our point, dog shit. Mm. Sub base, dog shit. So if we can get those both out for the next major, it'll be uh, it'll be much better. And I I really think you'd hit the hill, the nail. Uh, I don't know how to say the analogy. The nail in a coffin. Nail in a coffin. Nail in a coffin. Nail in a coffin. I don't know what you're trying to say, but the point is for Toronto, they've lost, <laughs> they've lost, they've lost six of the seven last searches right now. Uh, they need to figure out how to find out a bread and butter search, um, and that's probably the work they're going to do over the next uh, two weeks. Uh, how many fucking cucumber margaritas did you have today? Did you have uh, a lot of them? Like two? Two of them? Because Jesus boy, Christ. Benji. It's yeah. good work, Benji. Uh, Sam, what did you think about the series? What would you think? I don't look like shit. Um, other than scrap, they just had some tough individual performances. Dill had more kills in the control than Jamie had in the series. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was good to see like a bounce back from Dill because that's what we were all looking for from yesterday. He had a, a pretty tough day. But yeah, overall, um, the only person that had a consistent weekend, I would say, is Scrap. Toby had his moments. Um, he played insane, really good pod yesterday. But bro, Scrap is, is one man army for this team right now. Um, but I mean, we kind of expected this going into the major. They were tapering <laughs> off online. Um, their S&D, to Ben's point, looked like complete shit. Uh, and they only have Karachi to lean on. And when you're going to play New York, who's the best S&D team right now, um, it's not really going to bode well. So. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of an expected result, to be honest. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, a crazy day here. 
K-Sun just entered the building. He's going nuts. Shout out to k -Sun. He was in the crowd all day today just going fucking crazy. No, I heard crazy. him on stream k -Sun, battling. k -Sun, yeah. someone needs to make a montage of all the shit you said on stream because it's loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you like clear as day. <laughs> Dude, it's comedy. I know, it was hilarious. It's comedy. But let's lock back in. Uh, let's hop on over and uh, uh, watch some clips, yeah. take a look at some clips unless you guys have anything else to say. No, let's um, go in the clips. Uh, let's hop in. So we start things off. Uh, over here on a Rio. I just thought this was a really big break here for the New York subliners. I thought this was an opportunity here for Toronto to soak a lot of time, and you can kind of see how it unfolds. I'm going to have to rewind it back a little bit because they get here fast. They, they trade this guy out quickly, uh, and they got a good setup here. So after they kill Dante, uh, I'm thinking right here. I just don't know through this rotation what the fuck uh, – Toronto's doing on this setup. I don't like this setup. His Dylan's so far pushed out. I'll just let it play so you guys can see how, how New York breaks it. And then you guys can give me your thoughts. But this is a, a hill where I'm thinking Toronto have to set up here and just get uh, an insane hole. And look at the spawns that come in as well here. I was a little confused by the spawns. Do you think it's because number eight pushed out? That's it's why they flipped? Number, it's because number – wait, are you talking about where number three spawns? Yeah, look, the, the no, no, three look, yeah number three spawns out. You see how he spawns out and the split spawns come in? I just wasn't sure if that was because Kleenex was going a little rogue. Or if that was, I'm not. I'm not even too sure. Where, why when they happened. adjusted, did they think they were spawning on five? I want to see because they yeah. Because Jamie, ro Jamie rotates over, he gives up boxes. So they're gonna so. get this four dead, and I think they just yeah. The yeah. Jam Jamie just did not. So number eight was yeah. not. He he kind of read it, but everyone else didn't. I think you just like you just have to be careful. Number five influences that spawn a lot. A lot of teams will start to start to push that out, but it's happened in a couple of series that we've watched this weekend where people get that split spawn, yeah. like, you can't push past this hill. This is a hill where you have to play a tight setup, otherwise you risk uh, split spawning. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's less likely to split spawn if you're playing it from the other end, though. Like, if you're pushing out towards that forklift where number two is, or pushing out the, the, the garage, uh, and, and they're spawning towards where Toronto is now, like number seven, number five, that's, like, where you're way less likely to flip. But on the other end, it's, it's very scary when you start pushing out P2. Yeah. Sam, what did you think about this play right here? Uh, Dylan Envoy, obviously, with a, with a slow start. He picked it up, though. He started going crazy. But slow yeah. start to this Rio. I mean, what did you think there from the setup uh, from Toronto? Because this was a lot of time from New York. They built their lead a lot here. I thought Toronto was going to take the lead here, and it ended up flipping on their on their heads. Um, I think this is just a product of, like, the priority spawn thing we talk about a lot. Like, if one spawn's open, um, if Toronto will get it or not. And then I think it was just good plays on the 1v1s on both sides, to be honest. Like, even though they got the split spawn and it was an ideal situation, yeah. I think that – um skies really like play the situation properly to to set up the break originally but yeah this was um i think the, the how this map started dill kind of continued his woes from yesterday uh, and i think that was the reason that this map kind of got out of hand uh, a little bit early here thankfully he stepped it up in the control but um it seems like dill was kind of struggling early here yeah, yeah for sure um and then we go on towards uh uh, to, we keep going on in this map. I wanted to tune in to the listening from the New York subliners because I thought it was phenomenal. I thought the listening was insane. So let's tune in and tune in to how New York sounded here in the real hard point. For the listening, for the New York Subliners, what did you guys think? 
They were locked Shit. in. Got me bricked, bro. Yeah, like there, there were the there were a couple um, really key moments in that. Paco like stress calming that there were four hitting through old, so they didn't have to pick up pinch. Yeah, Dante telling kids to fill mid off spawn, like he ends up picking it up. Like Caesar calling spawns at all times, like that was fucking yeah. perfect. The, the, just the small talk is what impressed me the most with them. Yeah, um, you could just tell they were all on the same page, and then. Uh, not too much to see here other than Scrap just completely frying. Jesus. I just wanted to show why this map was even close, and it was basically just because Scrappy uh, goes fucking insane. Uh, I mean, he's 34 and 25 that right now. That guy's undeniable, bro, with any gun he uses. It's any actually gun. impressive. He's permanent 30 on this map. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, his teammates were all negative in this one, so Scrappy needed uh, some help here. Um, but, of course, the first map goes to the New York subliners. Uh, Scrappy doing everything he can, but... Uh, at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough from them. Uh, and then we go into the S&D, I believe. Let's see what I, what I got here next. Yeah, then we go into the S&D. Something I wanted to show everybody back at home, wanted to educate some people. I didn't know about this wall bank spot, but this is insane from Paco. I've never seen anything like this. Just to take a look at how New York is playing these games, they seem so prepared. And uh, this wasn't the only thing that I was, like, going crazy about. Even the grenades that they threw with the – what's the name of that perk? What's the name of that Ordinance. shit? Ordinance the ordinance, clubs. the ordinances. So this is Paco wobbing Kleenex off the rip, going up the ladder. Kleenex probably would have survived if he kept going up, but he jumped back down. I don't know if he panicked or something. I don't know what happened. He might have panicked and jumped off. Um, but a crazy wobbing there for Paco. What's going on with Paco and these wobbings? What, it's just practice, huh? Practice makes perfect. Oh, yeah, New they York were saving these. Is nerds, man. I love it. Nerds. I, mean, they, I mean, they were showing they were nerdy last year off the rip. Like, this has been their yeah. MO for a minute, but they... Definitely whipped out a lot of new stuff here on the weekend. Yeah, and then this is the round 11 here. I'm just going to let it play out, but I just wanted to get uh, think uh, ask you guys what you guys think. Personally, I think Toronto Ultra just did the do-nothing. It just takes them so long to actually think about what they want to do and, and where they want to go. And right here, it just seemed like Toronto Ultra. They were indecisive. I don't know if it was because it was round 11 or maybe because Kizmi was here. Maybe they were scared of him. Um, I, I don't think they knew he was here initially, but I know the door cracks open. What were you saying about the door, by the way? Um, so this is just a tip. But basically, whenever you crack a door open on COD, if you run away from the door, it'll auto-close. But if the door never closes, that means the player is in close proximity to it. And you, they'll base, they, like, they could have basically Jesus figured Christ. out that Kismet was still in yeah, this room. How did you, I the, even know that. Yeah, I'm a nerd. So, know, if, so if you crack the door open and run away, the door it'll, it'll closes? Close, it'll auto-close, auto yeah. yeah. It'll but, auto -close. But, but look at the play that Toronto makes. The, there's, the time is clicking now. You got under 30 seconds now to try and make a play because they waited so long to just make something happen. Then they try and get onto the bomb, and there's really nothing for them to do. Dante's able to find two from, from top AC, uh, and then they just get funneled in, like, five seconds as soon as they try and make the play. I mean, New York was just prepared for it. What did you guys think about the strat call there from Toronto? I think Kismet even said it in his interview that they kind of know how they like to play, and they know that a lot of the time Kleenex will lurk red by himself. And if uh, even if Kleenex is uh, still red, to watch – B until they overcommit A side because they don't want to get caught off guard with a split strat and they pay, they basically read it so yeah no, good plays out of them that was a good place from New York I mean this one goes all the way down to around eleven they were able to close it out I just wish Toronto would have made just a, a more decisive play because they just seemed like they were a little confused yeah uh, the do nothing only works when you have bomb down or you're on defense I mean do nothing Agreed. definitely doesn't offense. work when New York knows you know if Toby goes somewhere the other guys are going to be somewhere and they got a harder read on what you're going to do yeah no 100% i agree um and then we hop into the control and honestly this was just a play that i thought i thought New York messed up here man i, I thought they messed up uh it was uh, i think this is the play was this the play from from Dante so you can see the kills come in from New York Actually, no, they actually win this. I'm thinking of another series. Sorry, this is where they go crazy. What do you guys think about Toronto's setup here? Because New York ended up wiping them and getting on to this point. It doesn't look like they're filling in left, but they do lose a lot of points. Well, back or, or a lot of time. the beginning of this clip. I do want to say one thing. Paco is always finding his way onto this point. I mean, he is always on here. I don't know, I don't know how he's able to find these gaps. I feel like he just has really good timings, and he just, he just knows when he's able to sneak in there. And the fact that he's able to get in here, stop the clock, and find some kills, I mean, you could just see uh, how, how talented he really is. But when it comes for Toronto, I just think these players all spawn need to go left. Let's go left, like fill in left. I, I just feel like right is so pointless right now when you have somebody pushing through the front of your point. And then you can see how Paco is able to get in there and, and make a play. I mean, Sam, I'll start with you. I mean, did you think Toronto fucked up here, or do you think Paco just made the play and just got in there? Uh, I think it's a combination of Jamie kind of selling the the first kill right there when he jumped at him, but Kiz gets an unbelievable two-piece uh, to to get, like, middle map control. But 
uh, defense and or offense on this map is all about like dragging arrows around. Yeah. And to your point, Tom, that's why I think New York is good at offense on this map because Pacos knows those uh, timings to push up a street based on like spawns or callouts or whatever. Right. Um, and if you can move the defensive setup on this map, that's where you get your offensive wins. And I think uh, Paco is a, a real mastery of that at this point. Yeah. And then also something to note on this last round here in this two, two round Toronto had three kill streaks going into this round three three cruise missiles and they still lose the round i mean why do you think that is i i feel like if anything you use one of the streaks when they're pushing through front maybe they burned them away i mean what, what do you think happened here like how do you lose with three streaks i think it's you're just you you have so many advantages and you're already on defense that like you i almost think people that we talk about it on the watch party a lot people that get defense round five play so differently because it's an expected win so they yeah. almost play less like aggressive and less confident because they don't want to sell away their advantage. And yeah. I think whereas on the opposite side, when you're round five offense, that's when you have to take risks and like kind of over child or like try to take a different timing. Yeah. And I think that those two in combination with each other lead to a lot of those crazy round five offensive wins that we see. Yeah, agreed. Um, and then, uh, I mean, guys, I just asked you, is there any other thoughts uh, on the match or on the series? I thought New York came out and took a basis. I mean, it was obviously a close series, but they do get the 3-0 victory. I mean, Pat, we'll go with you. Any final thoughts? No, uh, New York looked good. I mean, like I've been saying, those guys are godlike. Um, I'm glad that they didn't have any blunders this event. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next major. Yeah, I know I know you, you had these guys winning it all. Uh, Pat, what was one thing that you think really stood out? I mean, besides for like the point eights, you know, or do you think that was the main problem? Just... I mean, bro, if you show up to an event and you got one person in every series getting like shit on, it wasn't like they just played average. Like Envoy literally... I don't know if you saw, there was a post. Envoy had, like, one of the worst hardpoint days on Saturday that I think I've ever seen from any player. It was, Go. like, he, he legit had four or five hardpoints and had, like, a .5 in yeah. over, over four or five hardpoints. Like, that's insane. I was insane. going to say, bring up his uh, control KD. So, he had a 1.5 here, but in the overall series, like, he still had a 1.0. He had a great map. They obviously weren't able to win it. But, like, the fact that he had a 1.0 where a map that he dropped, like, 40 kills on is, like, he obviously struggled. Yeah, he had one good map, but, like, Insight and him in general this tournament were just not themselves. They yeah. didn't play good. Agreed. But uh, and just go, going back to online, man, like, yeah. we said, like, we were talking about testing map pool. We are talking about, like, them just giving out wins for free. Uh, they like, were struggling, bro. They were struggling. Dude, I online. said that if you're going to give these teams the confidence. in the game. I mean, that's fine, but they, I said it on the show fucking weeks ago, bro. If you're just going to hand out free confidence to all your, your counterparts in the top four, guess who made it to the final? Not you. And you know I don't think confidence they, is why they lost, though. I mean, they literally got shit on. Like, yep. it's not about them losing. It's about the other play. teams playing better. I think you could argue that they're... They, it, lost, they barely lost every series. They I, just, yeah, like, they, if they, they have two guys dropping a .5, I you're think, never winning I think that you could argue that their hard point and, like, control and stuff like that, they were probably testing... Like, they were testing the waters on the maps. They could play the top teams. And when it came to their search and destroy... Like they, they was, there was no contest. Like they just weren't, they didn't have a second leg to stand on. They had one Karachi and that's the, and that map just does not match up well against the people they lost to. L listen, I'll, I'll say this and you That'll guys, you guys know this, bro. If you win that first event and you're ahead, everybody's watching your VOD, everybody's catching up and then it's up to you it's to, hard now to, stay to, to stay ahead, stay around the pack. And unfortunately for Toronto in this stage, they lost to phase once, they lost to optic twice. And then the series we talked about, they lost to New York. They got to figure out how to not be the fourth best team right now. Yeah, let's move on to the next series. Obviously, New York take down Toronto Ultra. Toronto Ultra ended up getting top four, so they get fourth place here at Major 2. Uh, let's hop into the winner's final. Uh, we have Optic Texas going up against Atlanta FaZe, and Atlanta FaZe get the 3-1 victory over here against Optic. We'll take a look here at the statue. Jesus, Jesus fucking Jesus Christ. Fucking Christ. Jesus. We red see carpet. a jump scare here. It's a red carpet. Bro, it's so funny Optic that I hear Texas. it before it pulls up on the street. Superstars? <laughs> We're calling them superstars? All right, Pat, go ahead. You take Jeez. the floor first. Yeah. What did you think about the series? Atlanta FaZe got a 3-1 victory here. I, I in thought a it was an Atlanta FaZe masterclass, Tom. I know the maps were close. They were close, Pat. They were close. Like, it was a stressful you series. Tell, it was close. I mean, Optic played it well, Tom, but usually the less talented team gets out outslayed and plays it close but atlanta face was gunning them they were gunning like, today non-stop sure. i just i like it to me it was a skill diff i think optic might have played better cod no bullshit but they i think really atlanta face was just a yeah. skill diff they literally were shooting look at we got a red carpet on the optic I think, side i like, think that's almost more impressive that these yeah. maps were that they, they, they were 13 point hard point wins look at the fucking scoreboard dude 
They were just uh, smoking them in gunfights. They couldn't. Gu- they couldn't gun to them. They couldn't go ahead to. I will say. I will say. Or, I will say that. Opti- on the optic front, they they turned up on the later half of like both HPs to make them close. The control yeah. was not that close, or it wasn't that close at all. But I mean, I, I think like the one thing you can tip here about optic, regardless if they lost the series and just in general with the stage, is they are their teamwork has been elevated a metric fuck ton because this is not not mm-hmm. even just this series. Like the entire time in their major split. When they went undefeated, they were winning maps, series, while getting out Slade. Um, that's why I put them, like, so heavily high up on that teamwork ladder. Um, because they just, they no, they just look like a completely different optic than they, they'd they have the last couple of years. They just got to find a way to, you they know, They kind of remind me back. of TK. <laughs> like TK? What, what era? Yeah. TK, all of them? Like, like Ghost and BO2 TK. So sharp, well, they they had great sharp. teamwork. They played great. They played fundamental COD. They they won S and Ds, but versus the best of the best, they just couldn't they couldn't hang in the gunfights. And that I mean, I mean they that beat was, New York that was Toronto, TK. I mean, I mean I yeah, think but that I'm talking about the best of the best, like the number one, the Atlanta Face. I, oh, I just think what Phase yeah. does a good job in these matchups against Optic this season, they just don't they just neutralize like a lot of the individual playmaking of players like Predant. They just don't lose people on the map. Do a good job when they know that those guys are last alive to stick together and force trades and not let, you know, Ant make fucking TikTok plays on the map. I, I also think okay. that Bruce has had a tough time in all in all of these series. And it is very tricky when your main is holding down lanes and not winning those gunfights. I really so. think it just came off to – it came out to the, the, the start of the maps. Like, the first rotation of both of these Karachis were, like – or not Karachi's, but at least at least the first hard point for sure was literally all Atlanta phase. They would just start off way too fucking slow, and Atlanta phase just built a lead that they basically just maintained throughout the entire game until they finally pulled away. But, like, dude, their teamwork, at least on the first half of these maps, were absurd. Like, they were, like, always together. Every kill was, like, immediately traded. They were, they were, they were doing a lot of, like, these Eiffel Tower setups where they would just, like, stack a hey. lane. And it was working out like perfectly off the rip. I thought the first map was going to be a blowout, and then Optic started to battle back. But I mean, was the uh, was, was the Tyler Abizi fucking masterclass in this series? Was that that was the game four? Right? That was the game four. Yeah, he Dude, absolutely the world chat. Started. I don't know if you guys saw my tweet or not. So it was a relatively close game going into the last P four of the Karachi. Tyler had sixteen kills. There were three more hills in that game, and he ended with thirty two. He went from P four to P one, getting sixteen kills, and just completely took over. Uh, Draza got a little response here for uh, Scrap. Scrappy responded to what is this? The interview. Draza calling out Optic and Scrap in his interview. And we'll watch that clip later, obviously. And then uh, Scrappy uh, tweeted at Adam or tweeted at the clip and said rent free. And then Draza said, "Wish I could have played you, but you were too busy dabbing up Dashy after you got slammed. Which team you on?" <laughs> So Draws is on demon time Dude, right Zach now. Is I can't lie, Zach's kind of cooking. He's, I can't lie, He's cooking, cooking, bro. He's on demon Zach's time right cooking. now. He's going fucking Zach, nuts. Zach was he going to chill on the map, and now he's going to chill on Twitter. Oh, my God. He's going nuts. Uh, any any other thoughts on, uh, on the series before we hop into some clips from the, from the first set? Uh, I will say this. I was actually, you know, uh, you guys know, I've been critical about uh, Optics, SD map pull, and we'll get to sort of the other series wall, but I thought they actually played the terminal or they well, did some good adjustments, some other players. They played good SD today. Yeah, they the they, they, they beat New York on both SDs, and New York is a really heavy SD team. They, Man, they won here two off round 11 against the, 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 the building yeah. blocks is there for Optic to you know have an edge in this matchup in one of these, but the respawns have been real tough from a slang standpoint. Yeah, agreed. Um, but let's move on uh, to some clips and uh, see what's going on here, folks. Let's hop into the first map. This is Phase uh, versus Optic. Uh, and I just like the play here from Ant. You can see Ant. He's coming off uh, through court here, and he's able to make the play here, and this is able to uh, help them try and win this uh, this game here. So it starts things off. One invasion. Let me scroll up. Uh, this was a weird. It was a weird spawn here. So MC ends up spawning fucking behind people here, and I don't know how. Now we kind of wanted to slow it back, and I mean, guys, I just really hope we never see this fucking map ever again. Uh, sorry, everyone. It's right here. So I'm going to pause it as soon as he spawns. But, uh, bang. Right there. How the fuck does he spawn right behind Optic Texas here on a pinch? Is it, like, how does that happen? Game sucks. Yeah, it, game sucks. It just sucks, right? Shit. I didn't know maybe because AG was pushed up, but I doubt it. I mean, he spawns in between the Optic players. He spawns right in between. And this ends up helping him because he gets him off the hill here. 
MC, he, he comes off spawn, and he was able to put some shots down and, and kill Shotzi off the point. So Shotzi goes down, three go dead. And I think they did a good job, though. They get right back in here. They get the trades. It didn't really affect too much, but I just didn't know if you guys had an answer to that spawn. Um, yeah, it has to be something to do with where AG is and the timing of phase of spawns. This would be the only, the only thing that could imp uh, impact, in my opinion. Yeah. Or, or, then, or just completely random this game of shit, which is also a very nah, viable I, I, I think I have an uh, explanation, but it, I would have to draw it out. You wouldn't understand if I was just talking about it. But mm -hmm. I think, in, to summarize, it's that when the hill is white, I think it has a bigger up weighting on nearby spawns than enemy down weights do, right? So, like, the way spawns work is enemies down weight the spawns that are around the map. Okay. What like, is down weight? Where they mean, are. Pat, what does that mean? Like, down weight? Like, what do you mean by like, that? Deep, yeah, deprioritize. So like okay. if every basically assign a number to every spawn point on the map, they all yeah. start at let's say zero. If an enemy's nearby, it could drop to like neg fifty, right? Like that would be the down weight for the enemy, um, depending on the distance they are from that spawn. And I think why we see so many inconsistencies with white hills is I think what they've done is that when the hill is white, it has a different weighting for spawns than it does for when either team owns it. Mm -hmm. And so I think what happens is because that spawn is one of the closest to the hills. The enemy that downweights the spawn isn't downweighting it enough that the neutral objective is upweighting it. And I think that's why they're getting those like really close spawns. It goes back to the point where white hills, enemy owned hills, ally owned hills, it shouldn't have a different, different weighting. Spawn, I think that's yeah. why we see so much inconsistency. I would have to like draw it out for you to kind of explain it better, but I think that's what's occurring. It could just be like a thing for like it's like a like a casual thing where it's like, oh, the game wants you to get into the game quicker. So like it's just mm -hmm. giving you a closer spawn. Uh, and then there were some other weird spawns here as well. First, I do want to tune in to the... Actually, no, this is kind of where it did happen. I'm pretty sure it was here. Yeah. Okay, so this is where some more uh, weird spawns come in. So, FaZe, they're trying to get to that next hard point. And you can see MC. He's getting there early. And MC gets a lot of kills here. But I just don't understand how Optic's spawning on top of MC here. Like, shouldn't they be spawning out Palace? Nah. But it, instead, FaZe is getting those spawns. I mean, it, the, the the spawn block on this hill, because the courtyard hill is up, is mannequin. And, and there were two spawns that came up Palace. FaZe and Optic were spawning Palace but right before this happened. So I'll rewind it back. Later, brother. Later, Kason. I'll rewind it back, uh, and you can kind of see how it unfolds. Like, I'm thinking right here... So two players come off spawn. That's because number Palace. five is number five is blocking mannequin when they do, and then once he dies, that spawn it's gets open. opened again. Because yeah, the, the 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 two spawns on this are the three spawns. There's one like where optic is in palace now, and then there's mm -hmm. one towards where phase is, and then the other spawn for the spawn out is mannequin. Yeah. So so it was being blocked, and then those spawn those players yeah. spawn palace, and then once he died, it opened it up. I definitely see it now. I, I thought. The way, watching it back, I was like, MC's staying alive. He's getting so many kills, but these spawns aren't flipping. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, good plays by, by Optic to, to secure those spawns. And hold on. MC almost did it by himself, uh, holding those spawns there. Um, and it Optic played around the situation yeah. really, really well. They, did. Like, they, they, they were did. kind of like, MC was getting kills, making plays, but Optic was soaking time that entire uh, sequence, which was yeah. really good by Which them. honestly, P3 and P5, I feel like is the only hill on this map where you can really yeah. soak some time. Like, it's it's so hard. This is why we always see this this map just go down to the time limit. It just always collapses. Um, it's just a lot different now. I'll be honest. This map is not played like it used to be. Uh, and I think it's dog shit. It needs to be removed immediately. Uh, but let's move on to the next clip. And this is the ending of the game, which can we have had a better ending, guys? I mean, seriously, can we have had a better Dude, ending I mentioned, than this? I mentioned the, the game clock on P1. Yeah, no. <laughs> we got to P4. Bro, that's actually insane. We were, like, this was a third set of hard points, and yeah. this is a third set. And, and look how it's 237 to 230 in favor of Optic. Now FaZe, they're diving into the point. I thought Sint made a great play challenging this guy here, Ace and D. And then he just stays alive just enough. To buy some time for his teammates. If Simp would have died there, I think it would have looked a lot different if he would have died right there. The motorcycle. Ah, the fucking motorcycle protected Simp for a second. But you can he shoot through the building next to it. Yeah. yeah you can the, the logic there well, is we'll, we'll get there with the Paco clip. <laughs> with him shit, shooting through. Actually, no. I don't know if I had. He didn't that do that today. Good. But that was Kaysan just saying, but he, he fucking shot ready. through that whole building. Kason, you can see Kason going fucking nuts in the crowd. What an ending there. Just wanted to replay the ending because it was just so mixy and... I mean, I don't know if there's anything you guys saw there that you caught. I mean, I felt like Optic was in do or die situation, and FaZe just won the fight. My uh, the main gripe I had was the P2 rotation. Optic was in like a really good spot, and they had streaks to use. And I think they kind of mishandled the situation um, when they could have got like a really good P2 setup. I think when Brandon was pushed out broken, I think they they had a timing to streak there that I don't think they uh, took advantage of. Yeah, and I know even right here you were we were kind of debating like whether or not we think they should have hopped out here and maybe get that that timer uh, down a little bit. 
Um, but they were in a weird spot. I mean, I, I probably would have got the time here, and uh, I actually probably would have got the time It's such a well. weird situation. Like, you would love if someone had the heads up to, like, pinch all the way around dark and do some bullshit. This but, was like, the biggest win right here. But this is such a weird this right here. Weird 50-50 thing that doesn't happen too often on this map. The fact that he's able to stay alive, I, I just think Simp goes fucking huge and just wins him the game. It was I good can't place. believe he ate another bullet right there. Yeah, That's insane. he's just tanking, bro. Just I think, I think Zach probably still gets in the hill. Like, I, I think Faze probably mm. still win this. Maybe because they're there. You got to think optic spawning yeah. powers. They're looking over it like it's it's tough. Like I I thought Sim clutched the fuck up right yeah. there. If if Sim didn't make that play, it would have been close. It, it could have gone either way. But uh, and then we hop over to the S and D. This is the four three round. The reason why I brought this round up is because optic keep doing this against Atlanta phase and they couldn't stop it. They can't stop the Esky push. And I was thinking by this point in the game. I'm thinking that phase got to be stacking this, bro. Like they keep going Esky and they keep getting that B bomb down. I was thinking FaZe can just give up plane, start stacking B in mid-hall, and just if they go plane, just retake it with your tax and call it a fucking day. But I'm just going to play it out and show you guys how Optic was able to do it. And it, starts with, it always starts with Shotzi, just getting fucking twisted over here on these planners uh, and going rogue. He pushes FaZe back, and he instantly goes for that bomb plan. It was, uh, it was a really good play here from Ant and Dashi to just get that aggression, take the space, and, uh, and get the bomb down. Uh, I just guess I'll ask you guys, what do you think FaZe should do to stop an Esky push like this? Because I feel like they got to stack. They got to adapt, which they ended up doing as the game went on. But I thought it was too late here. I thought they should have adapted quicker. But what do you guys think? I, mean, I personally just think, at least in this situation specifically, they had a guy pin golf cart. So they could have, like, probably used a little bit of small talk and tried to, like, activate on it. Maybe bait out the guy on the right that was always in the open. Like, he had no choice but to watch over his teammate and then, like, pounce on the guy on the left. I mean, yeah. once that guy's kind of, like... The, they're most exposed when they're still on that old P1, but as soon as you let them get onto your escalators, they had no choice but to back down. I don't know. I think they were just kind of, like, scared. They didn't want to give them a pick, and they probably... But I do I do like the strat from Optic. The one thing I do like about Optic strats, they get aggressive, they're decisive on B, but they also have people playing late flanks. Like, they're, they're kind of, like, they're, they're, they're around Dreams, they're around Terminal, just playing Lurks. I, I don't think AG need to make a move just yet. Um, but he, it doesn't really matter. They have the bomb down. The trades come in, and uh, and the last guy is up is MC. And Another thing they could up. do is, like, so unless a team takes both their trophy players over to that site, which sometimes that's a, that's something that people don't use foresight with, is save their grenades and use it to retake close because most people will trophy the backside, mm -hmm. you know, to cover the initial push, but then they won't have one for the site or, like, around escalators. So there's, yeah. like, you know, there's a couple ways you could play it. And then we hop over to the round 11, uh, and I just wanted to break it down. We could take a look at it and kind of see what's going on. Dude, I mean, Ant's play is insane. I thought Ant's play was fucking incredible right here. I mean, it's it was just the, the risk that he took. Uh, he, he I just, can't believe, I thought, he, dude, when he got off the bomb, I was like, oh, my God, he's fucking griefing. Yeah. And then... Well, I, I think know, he I got off the bomb over. because uh, they get blood. Like, somebody dies. Um, no, actually, nobody actually, dies. Nobody died. Well, yeah, he did get well, off that's the bomb. That's what I'm saying. When he, he got off, I was Why like, oh, my God. I think number selling. three or number Why one saw off? that this guy, number six, ran out of white, maybe. And they were just scared. He thought he was going to die he from mid-hole. He thought he was going to die from mid-hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he makes a good play. Even with the bomb, He's he's got that confidence to just hit that guy out and, and get the kill. It was a good play from him. And they make it a 3v2 situation. Bomb goes down yet again. Um, and Atlanta Phase are just kind of in a tough spot here. And, I mean, what plays it yet again? It's it's the Esky rush. I mean, this was the bread and butter for Optic in this map. They just kept hitting Esky, and Atlanta Phase didn't have an answer for it. So good play calls from Optic, and uh, if you're Atlanta Phase, you got to find out a way to counter that and, and stop that push because they were having a hard time with it. But uh, let's move on to the next clip, unless you guys got anything else to say on that round 11. No, Other I just love the – uh... The way Optic plays their offenses on that map. We talk about it a lot, like late playing through dreams and late playing the right side of the map when you're going B. And I think Optic's really the first team that we've seen um, like prioritize that style of gameplay. So yeah. I think it, it panned out well for them. Um, and they're listening? What's up? They listening? Oh, you're saying they're listening? Yeah, I mean, we talk about yeah. it a lot, and they're the first team we've seen actually fucking do it. So I don't know maybe why. They, maybe they watch the flank. I mean, JP's, JP's so. Maybe they watch the flank. They watch the flank. I mean, JP's in the chat all the time. So you know, I also want to tip you. something that I saw quite a few teams do today, even in like the I think in like the finals, is on that terminal S and D. There was a. Um, or not in the finals, but in that winner's finals, there was times where people were on their defenses when they didn't see anybody escalators. They were pushing through towards Burger and, like, flanking back book, and they were catching a lot of people off guard because most of the time people were kind of scared to hit that pinch um, because, I don't know, it just, it just seems kind of outrageous. But I think, like, when you read a lot of these team setups, like, Sim kept doing it. Sim kept, like, playing inside book 
And just watching that cross, I think it's just like very favorable when you when you do push that out because you're gonna catch that guy off guard a lot of the time. <sighs> yeah, somebody want me to go back and and show AG fucking staring down MC, <laughs> <laughs> which which I think is hilarious. I mean, there was definitely a lot of banter and a, and a lot of shit talk going on in uh, in this series. I mean, if you guys really want to see it, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll rewind it back for you guys. So you could take a look at. At AG going fucking nuts. Um, but there was... Dude, I think, I think, or no, FaZe started out up 3-0. MC then shot someone's body and they lost four straight. I think MC lost like three 1v1s in this map yeah, or something. Yeah, he did. He shot... I mean, to be fair, MC's been shooting bodies oh, all no, weekend no just, matter who he's playing. Yeah. And, and I'm happy that the stigma is fucking gone. Because he's been shooting bodies all weekend and they won the event. So I'm happy that fucking stigma's gone. Uh, and we'll take a look here at the, at the final round here so you guys can see... Uh, the stare down, just in case you guys missed it. But I mean, Pred, I, I will say one thing about AG: his energy on stage is is phenomenal. I, I mean, when you yeah. have a teammate like that, that that gets so hyped and has so much energy and has that passion, you know what I mean? Um, it, it helps out a lot. It, it goes a long way. His listenings, uh, his listens, they gas me up, bro. He when he would get like kills, he was going insane. Yeah, and you can see him on stage now. He's just staring over at the Atlanta Phase guys. Look at him. He's staring them down. And uh, and then they ended up losing the next couple. And then they ended up losing um in the next map. This was actually a really big map. I think it was uh, Nameless who who was saying that the control was gonna be a swing mode in this yeah. one. I, I actually think he was right. I, I I think the swing mode was definitely in the control. The one thing Ant's been right about Phase the last couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> but I I, I, I I like that from AG man. I like AG getting getting chirpy and and staring down and fucking getting active in the shit talk. I I love to see that. I, I love that everybody was getting involved this weekend. Uh, at least with the top four teams. I feel like all the top four between Scrap and Draws and and AG and MC they all oh, and Kismet they they all got involved we're, a little bit. We're, get, we're getting back to the roots of the interaction. Getting back, we guys. It. We're getting back, and I love it. Um, uh, and then we get into the control now. Take a look at MC at the start of this round. He does not move from the back of the map here. At the start of the round here, he just hold, he just holds this. Look, I'll even play it out from the from the get go. And this ends up winning Atlanta phase the offense. You can see how it kind of plays out. MC, he's just I guess MC's just waiting for a straggler. He, you know, they're all he, I think phase is just all going B, acting as decoys. And then MC here is just going to look for a straggler, try and get a pick, and then try and progress up that A street. Uh, and you can kind of see how it ends up happening because Optic, they get the kills B. And then MC, you can see this, the close spawns come in from Atlanta phase because everybody from Optic drifted over towards B. Atlanta phase got those close A spawns. They hit the point, and they instantly cap A here. It was a really good strat, a really good play call there from Atlanta phase. Sam, I think it was you who, who called it out in, in the watch party yep. that he was waiting there all day. Uh, if you're optic, I mean, how do you how do you stop that? Because that close A spawn, you got to be really really careful giving up the left side of the map. You just ha you also have, you have to, to just, count players. You also have to count the players on the cross initially. Yeah. But one thing that Phase did well, and you you actually see it too. So they were prepared for other things too. Like they didn't just rely on MC. So they triple crossed, right? And one of them stayed mid tank. He stayed mid tank and was watching freezer door and like waiting for an overextension through mid. So only two people actually got to be. And you'll actually see this guy. He just gives it up right there. But you'll see he was there for a while. So they were kind of preparing to see if they would bait Optic into, like, a rotation and then yeah. kill them and then go. So, I mean, that's just good mind games, yeah, to be Yeah, it's good mind games, and it's just a good play call. I don't I don't know who made the play call. I'm, I'm sure it was practiced. But I uh, just really like the way they broke off that, that invasion control, that offense. Because that offense wins them the map. They end up winning the map. Uh, three one because of that offense. So really, really good plays from uh, from Atlanta Phase. Um, anything else on that play before we move on to the next one? Because the next one is pretty much just a highlight reel here. <laughs> this is the Abizi show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know what the hell he ate today, but this motherfucker was shooting. Uh, I just want to show this highlight because if he didn't do this, I don't think they win this map. I'm going to be honest. I don't think if, if Abizi doesn't make these plays, I don't see FaZe winning this map. And I, I think that just shows uh, the individual skill from, from these guys, they can kind of kick up at any moment. Simp has been going off all weekend. Draws and, and sell him as well. And, uh, and Abizi, he, he kicks the fuck up here. He ends up getting a big streak here, jumps out, finds another two piece. And, and he continues to keep this spree going as well. And this is kind of what mounts the comeback. Cause look at how far back Abizi pushes optic just by staying alive and being a nuisance here. He just keeps winning fight after fight and optic can't track him. I'm not, I don't know why 
This guy, I don't know why Shotzi didn't go bottom green and trade him. Because if you don't kill a BZ, you're fu you got to kill him. He almost got this kill here at the end, too. That would have been insane. Um, but you can see how, how FaZe was just able to mount the comeback here off the play from a BZ. If, if he didn't make, do, make that play, uh, I just don't see them uh, winning this map. It was just a great individual skill there. Uh, and then as we go towards, uh, towards the end of this one, it goes all the way back to a P1. And it was actually FaZe who ended up breaking in. Now, what do you think about the optic setup here in the P1? So you can take a look here. I'll rewind it back a little bit so you guys see how it set us. But it's FaZe who's coming from Chicken Coop. And you have Optic who are coming from red. I mean, well, if you guys are in this up, situation, what would up, you guys do back here? Back up real quick. Cause, oh, so Ammo's playing a corner. Oh, Bruce is playing a corner gets caught. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're Optic Texas here, what, what would you have done differently here on the setup? Or was it just good plays from FaZe? I mean, I'll let it play out. Shotzi was able to win the one-on-one -on, -one on Hill. He gets down, and uh, you can see Zach. He just gets into green, and Abizi has that streak. Again, if he doesn't make that play, I don't know what happened here. Abizi hit the ball. How the fuck <laughs> does Shotzi survive this cruise missile? I lost my shit when I saw this. What is going on here? I said, what the fuck? I don't even know how this thing came. Look at the explosions on his fucking head. But wall I, greater than. Yeah, I think he just what probably was the shots he's laying down behind the wall, and the missile probably yeah. landed on the other side of the wall, and it didn't kill him, which I mean, is I think, fucking insane. I think the key thing with the setup, and we see Optic when they play a lot of the top teams too, like like they 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 just uh, actually I take that back. I mean, they run through bottom church, and Chris gets two kills. I mean, you just give yourself has, yeah so many more options coming from top three in the market side of the map. Yeah. Like you, you can play through green, you can play through top AC to kill a guy off the hill, you can play through mid cut. Like there's just. Yeah. So many more options that FaZe have, especially compounded with the streak. So I think that because they got the market yeah. spawn uh, when the hill broke, they just, like I said, Zach just ran through the street, got yeah. bottom green for free, ended up getting kills for it. Yeah, and then Sim pushing out Satellite was such a good play. He pushes out Satellite. He's able to get behind them, and, and he just gets into their spawn. And even even worst-case scenario, say Optic does get a contest there, Simp has the rotation. So it was just a really good route from Chris. He, he pretty much calls game there. So good job from Simp. He was going off all weekend long. Any final thoughts on that map, gentlemen? Uh, not on that map, but Tom, I made a quick little five minute paint uh, thing. If you want me to explain what I was talking about earlier, uh, I can just share my screen. Yeah, I'll take over my cam. Yeah, if you want to share your screen. Uh, Bang. Can you see me? Yeah, I see you. So yeah. explain right. this, Lay. So, yeah, so let's let. Obviously, this is super oversimplified, right? So, mm -hmm. red team, blue team, and this is the white occupy uh, or <laughs> occupy hardpoint volume. Yeah. Um, and so. Distance wise, let's say this spawn, right? Let's say this is one of the weird spawns that the player got is the closest to the point. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I was trying to explain earlier is like you have basically this guy drew a diagram. normal line graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you have the weighting and you have the distance. So this would be the hard point. Um, and so let's say all these all these green circles are spawns, right? And they all have a value of let's say zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know the the hard point will change that that value up or down based on you know whichever things are occurring right and so in this case i'm thinking like if the point is white mm -hmm. then it's assigning like this this weight right where you have like plus 60 out to 10 meters and then it falls off over distance yeah and so like in this case let's say this is 10 meters so let's say 10 here mm -hmm. and so this this point right here would get that maximum 60 and then you look at like the enemy weighting and let's say an enemy would then down weight um the same spawn by 40 and so you'd still have a net value of 20 on that 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 one spawn that we're talking about here mm -hmm. because it's based on uh, distance. And so that, I think, is why, like, when the hill goes white, you see players getting weird spawns because the the value assigned is much higher than it should be because this should be the same and it should be much lower. But I think, like, in this, what we're talking about, modern COD, where they're trying to make engagements very fast, um, I think they're trying to spawn players closer to the point um, and I think yeah. that's why you see a lot of these weird spawn scenarios when the hills go white because um, this this amount changes. Like yeah. this would be the, the, the thank you, thank you, thank you for the, for the objective. The... If it's being contested, like shouldn't wait on where you spawn basically. Yeah, it should be the same whether it's white yeah. hill or you own it or I own it, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's W diagram out of Pat. It's a W diagram. Thank you for bringing that down, Pat, for the viewers. That yeah, was I phenomenal. You. I got you. As uh, you know, Pat's in development with with X Define and everything, so he knows a lot about this stuff. But one of the uh, many theories as to why the spawns are dog shit in this game. Yeah. But I think the yeah. problem though really is <laughs> that a poll. Did because Tom they go year to year, because <laughs> they go year to year, and you know. So many developers change hands and it's not the same designers that have been there, whatever. Like, I think that's why the spawns feel so different every year.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's hop into the next series. Uh, Optic Texas obviously falls short to Atlanta phase 3-1, and then they hop in to the loser's bracket, the loser's final, to go up against the New York subliners. Optic Texas get the 3-1 victory over New York here. Uh, we'll take a look here at the stat sheet. Uh, definitely uh, Optic outslaying them here uh, throughout the series. I mean, Sam, we'll start with you. Uh, Optic Texas, they get a 3-1 victory over New York to meet FaZe back into the grand final. What did you think about the series? Uh, I was shocked to see New York picking Karachi uh, against Optic, which we'll see the reasoning for why shortly. But the rest of the maps I thought were really, really good for Optic. Undefeated on sub base, uh, won it relatively comfortably. Uh, the invasion control, yet again, I've said they're the best invasion control team. Their offenses are fucking unbelievable, and I don't really think that they mess them up very often, barring some some crazy spawn stuff. But uh, once I saw the map set, I was I was pretty confident that it would be an optic win, and uh, sure enough, it was. Yeah. yeah, optic optic really outclassed them in all the respawns. Well, it and was a pred and Shotzi masterclass yeah. in the map one. Um, I mean, we'll take a look at the stats. A 1.8 from AG in the map one, a 1.2 uh, from Shotzi. They were just making plays all over the map. The sub base was, was clinical from them. Dante definitely needed uh, needed some help. Eh, I mean, they were all kind of around the same spot. They were just struggling. New York was struggling in that map. They got slammed in the map one. Uh, I think but, it was front running super well. Yeah, uh, they they did a good job staying ahead of the game. Uh, but Ben, what did you think about the series? I mean, again, I think I think Optic had a pretty good masterclass in the respawn, especially the first two uh, maps. I think to your point, the the subs fried. And I think fortunate for New York, you know, this wasn't Kismet's best weekend. Paco had an off series, uh, as Sam alluded to. You know, uh, New York uh, has Rio SND as an auto veto, so Karachi SND was going to end up in this one. I thought that Optic would pick it, so in this case, um, with them, you know, being Team A, you'd get that map five, but New York with the Team B pick, and then we'll get in the clip some excellent um, strats they put in, some nerdy stuff they did to win that map. Yeah, Pat, what did you think about the series? Uh, I thought it was a good series, but I'm, I, I know we talked about it a little bit during the watch party, but... I can't help but feel like Kiz is a lot more inconsistent on this game than he was last year. Like, last yeah, year, we were talking about, up. like, 99 Bulldog. Like, he was having himself maps and series and winning team, winning his team games, uh, obviously along with Hydra. But I feel like in this game, I don't know why, um, and obviously I think it goes back to the maps because it's it's not just him as a faster-paced sub this happens to, but I feel like his, his consistency level is a lot different. I think that's really hurting this New York squad. Yeah, you you yeah. see different glimpses of it though. Like he's he's still really good at this game. Like Kismet's insane. Oh, it's not yeah, like he's not a star. Team. Yeah, it's no, just, he's really yeah. good at this game. He he, he they, there is some inconsistency problems, but I, I I feel like it's with the squad. I feel like the squad itself is inconsistent. I wouldn't really say it's it's Kismet. I I think it's all of them. It, it's just some some series they come out and they just look a little flat. Uh, they look, they're definitely prepared in their searches. I'll tell you that with the wall bangs and the nades. I'll definitely doing tell you homework. that, but they're doing their homework for sure. Uh, and I'll show you guys some clips, but um, I, I definitely think in, in the respawn sometimes they just look a little uh, discombobulated. I think they're, you know, I, this, is, this has been Thank a wild that. stat. I mean, they are, in, if they win game ones, they are 10 and 1. They lose in their 5 and 5. Getting that early momentum is key because such a good search team in this game. They lose the first map and then. Doors are wide open. Yeah. Yeah. I almost want to say I want to see him slow it down. Like, does anyone disagree with that? Like, I mean, probably I, just even, with the style. I mean, so I, even I, even though even when he does good, he'll have like a hundred and ten deaths. Even though he has like ninety kills, like he obviously gets his kills, but I feel like he's he's just playing a little too fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I have a take, and I want y'all's opinion on it. I think him and Dill are both like really good. Envoy are both like really good superstar compliments right like dill plays off of toby and kiz plays off of hydra and i think because of the way that they are trying to like gap fill and like make the right play every time off spawn and like kind of help their main quote main slayer like do their job to make sure that like paco is frying or toby is playing well i think it almost like impacts their gameplay in a way that like lends to these super insane engagements that Pat's talking about. Um, so like when Kiz is trying to run around the map and tr help out his team, same with Envoy, like it leads to these super inconsistent series. And I think mm -hmm. that they need to play almost a little bit more selfish uh, and oh, slow definitely. down to, to what Pat was saying. I mean, th that that's just like something that I've noticed as well. I was going to point that out before Pat did um, that Kismet's just kind of been inconsistent in this game. And I think he just needs to step it up for this roster. But at the end of the day, like, I, I said this before, I split these top four teams up into the Slay heavy teams and the teamwork heavy teams and Optic and New York are both on the teamwork heavy side. I think they definitely have like Slayers on their team, but more often than not, when they play these like 
slay heavy teams, you're not really seeing them like go rogue, right? At least Toronto before the major was like a super slay heavy team. You obviously saw them come out here and and, and kind of have some of their some of their players be flat, but for the most part, like they just got to step it up in the slaying category because they have the teamwork. Like I think New York plays like really good structured Call of Duty, and Optic even has started to play like way better using teamwork. But mm. Kismet, Kismet from an individual standpoint, and even sometimes Skies, um, they just have to step it up in the slaying numbers. Yeah, just uh, take a look at here at some clips from the series. This was the three-two round here in the search. I'll up the quality for you guys. Uh, this is a big 1v1 from Sib. There's a lot of controversy in my chat. I didn't think this was a snake at all, but hella people in my chat were saying it was a snake and calling for a red card. I mean, they're fucking nuts in it, but uh, what did you guys think? Did you think this was a snake from Dante? I did not. I thought he was crouching uh, again. Uh, no snake. This is no, where... No those this are crouches there. No those snake. are crouches it's, there. It's One not snake. a snake by, de by the definition two of snake. the GA, okay, but pumps. the problem is... This is where the line gets drawn, um, and it's just something that is going to be kind of impossible to fix, right? In my opinion, a pop-up glitch, a one-pump, a two-pump is still a snake. And most of the time, when people do it, they are intentionally knowing they are going oh, to pop up somebody and snake them. Rather, It's not obviously egregious, but at the same time, like... That's the one thing that you'll never be able to stop if the animation isn't fixed completely, where people are knowingly like, I'm going to one pump this guy and get a, gain an advantage in a scenario I should not have an advantage yeah. in. So, like, yeah, it's not a snake There's by no definition point of to the GA. The animation, though. It's just like, it's just annoying. Like, and they let, need let to, they need to fix it. people do it all they want. Just let people do it all they want. What do you, you mean? Just give them hella sway when they stand up. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously there's That's ways to fix doing. it. Yeah, but you no, get the I mean, point. That, that is a good, that <laughs> is a good way point, to do dude. it. But it's just, it's so and, cringe. And then also, I mean, it makes the most sense. Like, if you want to do this, when you stand up to go for a gunfight, your aim is swaying like crazy. You can't hit your shot. Yeah, then you can like do this and get all the, like, you can do all this, get all the information you want, but you can't stand up and take a chow right after you do it. That's the whole point. I will say that Scrappy came in during the watch party today and. He basically said that their team aren't following GAs anymore, and that he's chalking that shit up because Dante Stair glitched him, and he lost fucking composure. So uh, apparently, GAs might be chalked unless the GA Wait, commissioner can a, figure something out. Over a stair glitch, not a snake. Nope, it was a stair. Dante was uh, stair glitching mid cut. Did, on, did you show your clip on like, Karachi? I, I, I would, I would, uh, I would low key rather pulled, no, stair glitching just, just become a thing a again and, and snakes stay out. No, I remember it was, I remember it was in the search when, when Scrap uh, shit on him shortly after, actually. Remember when he chased him into green cut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stair yeah, glitching is nowhere like, near as bad as snake. Stair glitching is much worse than fucking snaking. Because no, it's yeah. not. Because it, you can't do it everywhere. But we are forgetting. Snaking is a... Bro, did, did you watch the last two years of CDL, bro? People the problem literally is, go to cover and just fucking bob the up and down. Yeah, but eventually you have to chow snaking. Stair glitching, you are impenetrable. You, you are literally really unkillable. Die. Like, you actually Even though the spots die. Slay. The spots aren't everywhere, but the, where they are is insane. Yeah, bro. Imagine you're playing high rise and the guy's just like laying down, stair glitching blue. Like you are not, you can't go in blue. Or like they're you're coming cheese, out the windows. But... They're just cheese. Yeah, they're both whack, but I would way like rather watch you eventually someone. You got to shoot your gun. <laughs> that, stair glitching, you're just, what do you do? You stun Nate and hope he doesn't have a trophy. Bro, but the yeah. difference is people intentionally snake. They like went to spots and just snaked the whole round. That's like, why we call the yeah. snake pit fucking. I think both are dog shit, and if you do them, you're terrible. Yeah, I don't like. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen with GAs. I told Scrap. I said, Scrap, why are you looking at me? You gotta start talking in the GH. You gotta get people talking in there, and you, you guys gotta look at certain things, look at clips, and then if you guys want to punish people, punish people. I don't know. Like you guys gotta figure something out. You know what I mean? Uh, apparently, there was a lot of GAs broken this weekend. Maybe some of them we didn't see, but. Scrappy looked Once in here bet, and said, "Nothing has been said in that chat in months." That's, 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 what, that's what I'm issue. saying. It's, it's that's all, the it's problem. All talk, that's no, the fucking it's problem. All talk no fucking action. It, it, it's like, what am I throwing red uh, cards and yellow cards out for if we're not going to use them? You the, know what I mean? The committee's well, never fucking meeting, Tom. That's a problem. The fucking, I guess, perpetually fucking. In yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, at that point, you know, they gotta, uh, they gotta try and figure it out and, and talk amongst themselves. Listen, if they're not gonna talk in the GA chat, then I don't want to hear them bitching. I don't want to hear any fucking bitching, bro. If they're not gonna be in the in the GA chat trying to get something going and, and trying to get some initiative here. Then it's fucking chalk. If Scrappy thinks that people can't follow GAs and it's over with, then we go right back to square one, which is where I said we were ultimately God, no. gonna get to. Bro, I mean, no, uh, eventually we were gonna get here. Every core heads are gonna prevail. Obviously, you'll go back to fucking Jersey. Take 
take a look at some of these clips. Get some people <laughs> Back on to the street. basement Jersey. Jersey. Basement, huh? <laughs> Last time I was okay. in Jersey is when the GA commission shit uh, went down in the basement. So we might need to make that happen again. We might need to figure something out. But, um, yeah, just a little controversy there. And then uh, another clip here from the series. Take a look at the spawn nades here. From New York, Chris, you can explain it better than I can because I forgot the name of the perk again. It's a Ordinance. weird name. <laughs> Ordinance? Ordinance. Arm. So it's strong um, arm. It's strong the arm. I know it's strong arm. I know it's strong arm, guys. I'm not a, what are you, what am I, a moron? I just didn't know. I couldn't remember the perk. I was I, hitting you with those strong arm stuns in 2014, Tom. Where? Yeah. yeah. But basically, yeah. what, what it is, wrong. basically the gloves allow you to throw things further. That includes nades, trophies, and stuns. And it also allows you to, um, what was the other one? Pick up grenades pick up and, reset and reset the timer of frags. So I think they're pretty useful. Um, people don't like to use them in respawn because it'll fuck them in scenarios wherever they're trying to like quick stun or quick nade a cut. Yeah. And cause weird bouncing stuff. But in search and destroy, I mean, like you saw New York, um, there's a lot of nerdy shit you can do. I pretty much said this like when the game came out. I was like, yo, ordinance gloves are really good. Mm. Um, maybe people should um, try using them. But like you did say guys, that, by the way, because yeah, some people, were, people saying were saying you didn't I didn't. Say I literally that. did. You I did say that. I'm you a did. fucking nerd. I literally read everything about every attachment, glove, whatever the fuck in the game. Um, so I'm glad that somebody actually took the initiative because I'm I'm concerned they might get like banned or GA because why? Like, why? why? I, did are not. I, I don't know. I'm not saying they should. Let me finish. Do you guys? Do you guys, do you guys no, not 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 remember Backlot in COD? We didn't. We didn't even have any perks. You had to. You had to dodge prenates. That was literally. Yep, like, if you're yep. on offense, that was the let, let, let Chris, guys, let I'm Chris more finish. so just saying finish. that, like, other things in the game, some people might just view them as cheesy because, for example, like, at least on Karachi, if you throw those nades every round, it pretty much just denies any sort of coop or instant top three control. And all it takes is one because it's a car bomb. So that's going to mean, like, that is going to set a meta where that nade is being thrown every time a person is off spawn. And that essentially just denies any control over that site and it makes the defensive end on that bomb OP. Um, I'm, cool I'm not that. saying that's one less frag that the I'm defense not has. saying it should. I'm just saying there's ways that these pros can view stuff like this, especially like even those like crazy wall bangs that probably won't get patched because the developers are lazy. And um, the wall bangs are godlike too. Yeah, it might get it might get GA'd. Um, I hope they don't. But at the same time, I thought it was <laughs> cool that they took that and innovated with it because, I, like I said, I said you could do some crazy shit. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not taking credit for their nade. Like I didn't go there and and learn and learn how to do it. I'm more so just saying it's great that we saw some innovation because New York's been pretty much doing that even since last They're year. Always, New York's always hey, ahead. Why, why did Troy come out from backstage? It was hilarious. What happened, Pat? Isn't FMJ banned? Yeah, the ammo type, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, back in the day, you would do that same shit with FMJ. It no, was even the, better. It, it's going through the entire map is what it is with the wall bangs. Like, that's not even Good. like... Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. I, am a, I am a huge proponent of everything that New York did this weekend. They played the game. They figured shit out. It was a knowledge gap, and they put in more work to, to figure out the Ordnance Club thing, to figure out the wall bangs that Paco were doing. If, if, if you, you want to do them, fucking play the game. Figure it out. Yeah, with, if you don't want to get wall bang. Put your mag barrier down and then lay it down. That'll soak it up. There you go. <laughs> Deployable cover, bro. Uh, yeah, then we hop that. into the control here. And I thought Dante kind of messed up here, bro. I think he should go to point here just to kind of see how it happens. So that's one dead, two dead. Now that is three dead. Um, and then the last guy is coming through mid. Boom, dead. Right here. Everybody should be booking it to point here. If anything, number five should be cutting uh, like red in, in laundry. And Dante should pull out his pistol and get to that point and stack that point. Because instead, yep. they only have one guy on it. Dante decides to play kills. They get more kills off of this. But what ends up happening is, look, they're even getting more kills here. And then Dante gets a third, but then Dashi wins one fight, and they're already here now. And then he loses the fight on Hill. It's just, man, that was an opportunity for New York to make something Bro, happen. It, and it, I, even I, if Dante, Even if Dante like didn't flood the hill, which I think is the play should have done, like, he should have also held the cross. The Baylor, so his teammate coming down A Street, like he just he get he of the three options that he chose, he chose the worst of the three. And I hey, talked yeah, about yeah. this. You're, are you, what, what do you think, Sam? He should go to point there. I mean, obviously, he should go to point. I think he should go. I think yeah, he, I think him going to point was more important, but I think he was just paranoid that he was going to get insta trade from this angle. Obvious. Obviously, his teammate. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say obviously his teammate is there, but he's kind of watching the mid cut. He's not really watching for that close mannequin door, so. Um, he definitely should have gotten a point, I think that. But what I'm talking about, like, in terms of watching the cross, like, he mm -hmm. had to make sure he didn't get insta-traded. 
Yeah. Well, once the guy mid dies, there's no threat of a trade. No trade. Once the guy dead. dies, he's already regenerating but once his health. That guy mid when he, dies, he pretty much back. turns around and it's kind of yeah. Toy. He just runs across, fire a car straight to the point. He should have gotten a point there. Yeah. And then five cuts Manigan or cuts their mid cross, and then I think six eventually will show up uh, a search. I think yeah, just Dante just waits for that mid trade. I think if he full sprints it without knowing where that last guy is, yeah, like yeah, he could he looks troll there. But once he dies, there's no excuse not to go to point there. Yeah, um, and then after that, we head into the two one round, and I mean it was clinical from optic on the offense they are really good They're insane at, offense, at, on at offense on this map just to kind of see how it all unfolds they're able to get pushed up here i mean new york's doing a good job they're they're pushing out left they're they're playing tight because optic they were getting kills and they they kind of got new york kind of pinned here and it starts with ant he wins a, a gunfight on the pinch kenny he ends up falling here but he makes them both one shot so dashi immediately gets back into the play and then Dash, he angles himself so the guy in Hill can't kill him. He's able to get that guy off the soda machine. And take a look at this. That is probably the cleanest four dead you're ever going to see. All four players go down from New York at the same exact time. The gas spawn was being blocked, so they spawn out deep broken. And Optic worked the stack here uh, and win the round. They take it with ease. Fantastic plays from Optic. They, they're really good at offense. Sam, why are they so good at offense? What makes them so they good at it? They just understand how to play like those mid timings and the spawn kills. Every time you see Optic win an offense on this map, it's a product of someone getting into their gas, like the, the building outside of Mannequin, and yeah. playing the kills on the tank and things like that. Yeah. They block that gas spawn, spawn them blue, the round is over. Yeah. They always find a way to get through Mannequin in mid, and it's just it, it's a collapse, bro. It's it's fucking poetry in motion every time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, agreed. And then, uh, then we move move on to the hard point and i thought going into this p5 shotzi made a great heads up play here uh this kind of in my opinion i thought this changed the game because i'm thinking new york they're gonna they're gonna flood through street and maybe get some tax on new hill and push through front kind of force optic to those like back gas spawns but instead shotzi he finds a timing here on the pinch and he does find a good timing there it doesn't look like his mid sees him but the streak comes down for Dante, and Shotzi's able to find a two-piece. So it's just so big from Ant to make that pinch while the streak is coming down. Because you know Dante's going to kill this guy in Hill and get the information. This is looking like a New York break, but Shotzi makes a good heads-up play here. Uh, just a really good pinch from him. I don't think if he makes that play, Optic don't lock down this hill, and they go on to build their lead a lot more here. So it's just a really good heads-up play from Ant to, to work that flank and, uh, and just get in there and, and be a nuisance uh, for New York. Um, any thoughts on that, guys, from the play from Ant? No, it was a really good play. Yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a game changing play because New York had an opportunity to, to break with the streak and, and bring this game back. But just really, really good plays from Ant there. And then we go uh, to the uh, last P three here, where Sam Kenny, your son, almost gave you a heart attack. Okay, take a look <laughs> this here. This is when he scams out of the this point. This is when he scams out of the point. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll rewind it so you can so you can see it, but. Um, it starts with, uh, with Optic. They're able to actually, it was a little, it was back here. Here it is. So you see Kenny, he's in the point. Optic, they have a perfect setup. Shotzi has the cross. You got three and four coming off spawn. They have the cross, but Kenny's chowing and he ends up dying. Uh, Kenny tries to chow it. He falls. And then once he dies at a point, it kind of fucks everything up because they die front. Then they're getting pinched gas and then everything kind of collapses. And just like that, AG gets traded out and boom, just a clean break comes in. So maybe a little bit of a misplay there from Kenny. But luckily for Optic Texas, uh, they bailed themselves out. They yep. bailed themselves out here. This could have got really scary here. I'm thinking we might be going uh, – uh, well, I'm not thinking we're going to a last bat, but I'm thinking <laughs> New York can definitely bring this back and hold a lot of time and, and basically tie it up going into that P4. And uh, it was just a great break from Optic. Uh, where they Was New York killhorn? Yeah. Right here, uh, I mean, I just will so, say this. Across the whole, oh, whole map. Paco, across the map, Paco yeah. got caught with a wide shot there, which it's didn't the, help. The, the thing about this map, Pat, is there's only two hills that you can get reliable time on. So there's just so many trades and so many engagements that, like, look at the. There's never time on the clock. And the reason that these scores are so, like, random is P3 and P5 are the only times you can get a good, reliable setup and so kill. Cool. Every yeah, other time you're just trade, trade, flood, trade, trade, flood, trade, flood, trade. This, bro. Like, I don't think it should be a control point or a hill. This might be the worst objective location I've ever seen. Mm. And Optics somehow know how to break a control, yeah, bro. They, they did it again. It. They, broke they know it how to again. do it. They broke it again. They pretty much just worked pinches. They worked pinches through mid and uh, they worked through front and you could just see the routes they took. I mean, I'm just pausing here. Just look at the routes they're taking. They're, they're all over the map and this is very difficult for the control point too, bro. Teams take notes. Yeah. I also really like this. Like, I mean, this is kind of underrated. I don't know if you intentionally did this, but how he slides across the store if there's a guy in cafe watching that mid cross like if he expo if he goes like this and hits this angle that mm. like that baited hydra right into his preamp yeah because like he went to chase the kill so 
rather than him just squaring up with the cafe guy and walking into a pregame, he basically just did the Uno reverse card and made Hydra walk into his. Yeah, the New York Subliners end up getting uh, 3 one by the Optic Texas. It was a very good series from Optic. They get back into the grand finals. Gentlemen, any final thoughts on that series? No. Nope. Was their final? Nope. Uh, before right. we get into the final time, I do yeah. want to bring up something. I get your guys' thoughts. Sure. Shotzi is 0-11 against the Tiny Terrors in 150 HP Call of Duty. 0-6 in Cold War, and now 0-5 in MW3. Oh. Definitely a good cherry pick fucking uh, stat right there. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Some... <laughs> What's 150 HP COD? <clears throat> um, we've only had two of the five years. But fair enough, I guess. Count? Yeah. I wanna just, he's never beat him. Yeah. The terrors are nasty. The terrors are going oh, crazy. Shit, the reverse, I, I think the I have. Slasher. Yeah, the reverse slasher. I have one thing the to say about one crazy. last thing to say about the series in New York in general. They they got to figure out whatever this real S and D issue. They just don't want to play it. Like the auto, the real S and D auto view obviously didn't hurt them in this series, but it hurt them in a bunch of different series. Uh, this split, uh, I do think that they need to figure that map out, especially the S and D map pool changes. They're gonna be forced to start playing it at some point. Yeah, um, let's hop into the grand final. This is what everybody's been waiting for. We got Atlanta phase going up against Optic Texas. Not trying to toot my own horn here, but I was absolutely flawless through my predictions today. Um, as Chosen. well as Sam. As well as Sam. Me and Sam were both flawless. I fear we know ball. Uh, is there any reason <laughs> they stop doing the, like, the full prediction? Like They just take whoever. It, like If you pick the winner, you automatically get like a free spot. Did they, what, ben, do you know? Why they stopped that? They've been doing that for since last year, I think. No, they used to ask us like, who would you pick in this series versus this series? Uh, I don't know. I think I think because they they just don't have time to do the graphic. I guess I don't know. Oh, all right. Seems the time thing. But yeah, let's hop into the grand final. This is the last series of the weekend. It's been a long weekend, so uh, you know I really appreciate everybody who's been watching the watch parties, tuning along with us. But we finally get down to this. We got Atlanta Phase going up against Optic Texas, and Atlanta Phase did not disappoint here in the grand final. They end up taking Don't it four down. one uh, for uh, in, here in the grand final. Uh, you can see the four maps they won right here, and then we'll scroll down. We'll take a look at the stat Don't sheet. Do it. Jesus, oh, everybody Jesus negative Christ. except for Kenny. Kenny saved him with the sound with the soundboard here because he's got he's got he's got a one point one eight. So Kenny needed some fucking help because my man had twenty k damage. Land, Pat? Um, Pat, you well, gotta actually, take that back. Bro. A, Kenny gets better on land, bro. That's a fact. He always has gotten I, better on land. I, I sadly don't think that's a nah, fact. He did play good that? in this series. He did play good in this series. Um, but I'm just gonna read you off some, some KDs against what, the top four what, teams. What about the land? What about the land match? Shotzi against, against Phase One. I, I'm gonna read you off from this major. Okay. Shotzi against Phase 0.77. Dashi against Phase 0.82. Pred 0.99. Kenny 1.02. Shotzi against New York, 0.93. Dashi, 0.94. Pred, 1.0. Kenny, 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, against Ultra, Shotzi, 0.87. Dashi, 0.97. Kenny, 0.98. Pred, 1.08. If you look at their consistency, uh, like I mentioned, Shotzi gets worse compared online versus the top four. Pred gets better, and Kenny and Dashi are about the same. So we I, care I, about KD as a metric of whether I, you're good I, or bad. No, it's total kills. Total kills. I, um, so we care about KD yeah. as a metric of whether we're good yeah. or bad. No, no, no. Total kills. Whether you get kills on land versus online. If you get more kills I don't online, know if he's saying then good you're or better bad. than you are online or on land. It's just, it's just a fact. It's I, not a, I don't think he's saying they're bad. I'm just saying he's saying that yeah, they're they, not, get, yeah, they perform They're worse. obviously... Kenny, Kenny's a star. Fred's a superstar. Shotzi's an all-star. Although I will say, and I did say this live, Sam, you were there. Uh, after this event, at least, I'm thinking Shotzi going down oh, to star <laughs> and Kenny up <laughs> Kenny to all star. Yeah, I, I do think. I mean, I he's playing better than Shotzi, so I think that's fair. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I just sure. think I just think the you know we've talked about this with this optic team that you know Brandon's not always the quickest player, AG's not always the quickest player, and it's very quick. Um, and Ken's trying to fill the gaps. I think it gets phase. You see sometimes like they're. Trade chemistry, like their, their ability to trade just doesn't work. I, I've noticed a lot, like, Ant's in these 50 50s of like he's definitely making individual plays, but there were times during the series where Ant was definitely getting baited by his teammates and they were nowhere to be fucking found on the trade. So I think they got to go back, watch the film, and work on I don't know if it's a mental thing, I don't know if it's a, a chemistry thing on just playing the same way they do against other teams and not being, I guess, so scared to play phase. I don't know. I don't know if they, I don't they're, know if it's I don't scared. I wouldn't say they're scared. scared I just but... think phase is just better. Like, they're just a better team. Maybe, maybe scares them. You guys get what I'm saying, though. I don't mean scares is not the right word, but they're definitely switching up 
to their yeah, play styles uh, and timing. And they, they just, they just can't record. shoot against yeah, them, bro. I agree like, that's him. That's a bad I mean, word. I just not see how record. Simp was starting maps. He was yeah, running the 13 at kill streak to start the grand final was definitely I was just running at them. It was the most disrespectful clip I've ever seen in my life. So, a few clips actually from Simp here. I mean, to start things off. So, first, we start things off here when it's going from a P2 to a P3. And watch how Simp is able to flip these spawns. So, he just plays a corner, which I love. He feels the pressure and he waits. Then he's able to find two, oh finds three, finds the three piece. Now, look at the spawns now. Optic immediately flip out off that three piece and they're spawning out. Not only do FaZe get this time, but now we go into the P3 hard point and you got Simp that goes on a 13 kill streak here against Optic Texas, which is a, a very difficult team to play against. And Simp makes it look easy. So let me rewind it because you guys did miss that first gunfight there. But that was actually for the streak there. So Simp, he's in this next hard point. He goes rogue. He's able to flip spawns by himself. And you can see him at next. And I guess we'll just let this play out so you guys can just take a look and see the plays that he was able I to make. I think we're but. faded right here. Look at this. Kenny, you should have calmed these in this corner. And I don't know what this guy does when he comes around the corner, but watch this shit. I mean, this was just crazy. And I love I love right here that Simp, he gets the kill and he pushes out and he has he bumps hill. He has somebody else get hill. I, I like how he gets shot here and he doesn't turn around and chow. He jumps off a top three, able to find one, able to find two. Then he's trying to stay alive here. He wraps Bro, he back with his team. He three times on this streak. He's probably fucking tweaking. Yeah. No, Kenny's definitely like somebody fucking killed this guy. Please. <laughs> Um, and you can just see just the way that he's he's able to read pressure and, and maneuver around the map. I mean, he, he's very, very good at just switching lanes and switching up his positions. Like, you can't track him. Like, you don't know where he's going. Even right here, he wins a gunfight while stunned. And he just continues to go, and that's going to do it for the 13 kills. He ends up going top bridge here and, and dying. But you can see just from Simp alone, these motherfuckers are up 100 points. <laughs> like, Simp just went fucking crazy. Um, so I definitely wanted to highlight that 13 kill streak because that was a record breaker uh, today. That was uh, That's right, the current record for... Yeah, uh, Dante had 10 before 10. that. Uh, and then that, this map gets close, man. We end up going down all the way down to a P2. And to be honest with you, FaZe, they win the fights. They spawn Optic out. I'm thinking, yeah, this is all over. GG, I'm feeling good. I'm smiling. And then I see this, and I go, oh, shit. Oh, no. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? They start trolling. They stop shooting at the guys running out of front. They all fall. And just like that, Optic are able to win the fights P2 and send this to another P3 hard point. Man, I was a huge player here staying alive. Uh, who did? Kenny? Fucking dolphin diving and shit. No, oh, and oh, he slides and out of the hill, chows the spawner, comes back. They need five seconds to win. He's buying, yeah. He bought all the time in the he world. He goes right nuts. Here. And I mean, FaZe, they're able to get a couple more seconds there, but this is where uh, I'm getting a little nervous now. I start shitting my pants a little bit. Uh, you can see the setup from Optic. It's a perfect setup here. I mean, they're ready to go. They're locked in. and It's not It's not a perfect okay, setup. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, not. it's definitely, I think. Uh, Break it down, Benja. Brother. Go ahead, Benja. Okay, Break okay. down the setup, Benja. So, so I go assume ahead. AG's trying to play for a top three hop. Um, but I think they kind of, either it's bad communication or the fact of the matter is the guy in Hill is only limited in so much of what he can watch left that, you know, AG is going to get singled out because they have no info the guys are going left. He dies stairs. And all of a sudden, you're shifted on the right and they have all the high ground on the left side uh, come from Coop and it's just a matter of just getting the trades. Well, I think AG just needs to be, AG just yeah. needs to be, I didn't, I actually didn't mind the setup. I just think AG needs to be proactive here. No, AG's got to shimmy and help them left because the guy in Hill can only watch, so he can't see the full left cross from Hill, think, no? Think the, think the biggest problem is, is AG just needs to be in a spot where his teammates can trade him and he's just not. He's pushed out in the staircase and they're able to kill him and they, they. I disagree with that I think uh, AG needs to to be in a spot to get guaranteed info. So yeah, he's playing a way he's playing a position that kind of leaves six out to dry and five because they get top three control. Granted, someone's in the hill looking at it, but yeah. they are under the assumption that someone's going to be top three, so they can't overextend to actually look low coop, and the guy on hill can't see the stairs. So if AG pushes top three, eliminates that six, can then walk out and play the dumpster to guarantee the info low three to like look uh, into coop. But instead, AG doesn't have any info for where they could be. So six has to play a way to not die from top three as well as five. So once mm -hmm. AG dies, five turns, Tyler pinches, game ends. Yeah. I was thinking just have AG just stay practical on the stairs. Like check your top, check your low. Check he your could have thrown shoulders like Like throw some shoulders, like throw some shoulders, like... Like you said, get the information. I just thought he could have been yeah. more proactive and just be, like been more mobile here. But he ends up just laying down here, and he just gets shot in the back. And then I think the 1v1 here on the pinch, because you, you see what happens. 
They die top three, and number five, Kenny, he ends up giving up the OE red because he's trying to help his team now. And then that, then the pinch comes in from a BZ. He wins the fight, and then it's just a clean four dead, and Atlanta Fays are able to take it. 35 and 23 from Simp in his map. Holy shit. What a map from him. But good break. You see Kason going fucking nuts in the crowd. <laughs> Getting everybody Dude, he was riled in the up. trenches today. In he the was trenches. fucking fighting. He was fighting in there, bro, and going fucking nuts. Um, you can hear him on a fucking stream as well. Uh, but just a really, really good uh, play here from uh, from Phaser on the break. I just thought they worked that perfectly. Just the pinch from a BZ and the way that they were able to trade uh, get that kill AG. I, I just thought the routes that they took there w was great. Uh, and then we hop into the terminal S and D. This was the four four round. And Optic, again, it's the same problem from the last series. This fucking Esky push. It's fucking, it's fucking Shotzi and it's fucking Big Brucey. <laughs> we can't handle these guys pushing Esky, bro. These guys just keep finding ways to get pushed up here and, and make a play. You can see Bruce, he gets, fuck, he gets pushed up here and uh, MC just not reading it. And uh, you can see how just all that beat control goes back uh, to Optic. We don't need to talk too much about it because we already talked about this play. But just to kind of show you that the same problems were happening uh, when they played the map again. Uh, just really, really difficult for them to hold that esky. I don't know what it is. Uh, and Optic obviously just know how to execute it really well. I think Shotzi, just his movement, he's just able to finesse and get up to that planner. It's a really good play from him. And then we go over to the 5-5 five, five, round 11. Optic, Again. they're able to get into plane. So if I rewind it back a little bit, this is where Atlanta phase stack B. So boom. Finally, they stack Esky, which I think they should have been doing this a long time ago because Optic just kept hitting out Esky, and we couldn't hold it. But finally, they decided to do it. Good call from Optic. I think Optic read that. I think they understood that they've been pushing Esky, and it was working for them. So they wanted to switch it up because I think they expected a blind counter from FaZe. And then they just get into plane. They get into plane. Sim throws the tax down. Uh, I, me, personally, bro, I, I think... Those tax Esky should be saved, bro. If we're going to stack Esky, I think Atlanta Face should save their tax. Just use your numbers, save your tax. Worst case scenario, they go A, you can retake with your with your grenades. Um, if you don't have grenades to retake a full plane setup, you're not winning the you're round. You're chalked, bro. You're fucking yeah. chalked. Because even like looking at it, like they don't have anything. Simp threw his nades in there, and he got him tagged up. Like Simp hit him with his nade. There was just nobody there to throw one with him. Uh, and then you can see the trades come in. Uh, and I think right there on the pinch, you can see Selim and Dashi, number one and number eight. MC sees Bruce, but look at how Bruce plays this. So he's able to find one on the pinch from MC, and then he finds uh, a, another one here, just kind of staying alive and, and playing his life really well. He's able to find a couple kills on the pinch and go massive. So Dashi wins him the map there. Uh, big plays from Big Bruce. Now you see the Green Wallers going at it. They're going fucking nuts. Uh, the crowd was electric today. Uh, good plays from Brucey there, huh? I think if MC wins that, that – if MC's more – because MC sees him here. If MC wins this fight, because he sees him cross it, if he wins this fight, I think FaZe win this round. He gives himself bad timing. So if he were to, like, I mean, obviously it's, like, hindsight because he's probably scared that he's going to get re-peaked from, like, cockpit and die. But, like, he's, like, very cautious, and he's hugging the wall and, like, looking towards cockpit. If he just, like, ran straight down the hallway while keeping that hallway gap well, he, in his He sights, put shots in the pred. He he's the one that got pred one shot. Yeah, he would have saw Brandon cross back towards Dreams. So, like, when he comes around that corner, he's under the impression that um, Brandon is already towards terminal, and he just gets shot on, the, like, the side, kind of. Yeah, it was a good play con. Optic also won all their fights as well. Dashie just – I just think Dashie goes fucking nuts yeah. on a pinch. If he doesn't get that two-piece, I don't, I don't think they win this round. Dashi just makes a really, really good heads-up play. Um, and then that's obviously going to do it for the S&D. Uh, there was a three-piece a three or a three nade from Kenny here in the 2-3 round, if you guys want to take a look at it back home, just in case you guys missed the series. But we'll take a look at it. Kenny, uh, I thought it was really weird that FaZe got into book here with three guys with no trophy. Uh, isn't that not like... A very big risk here. <laughs> I mean, you got yeah, no trophy in the most nated place on the map. And you can see just all the grenades coming in. They just get bombarded with frags. And Kenny with a nice little three-piece nade there. Just a little highlight. I don't think Optic was doing map. that every round. Like, maybe they no were. Flag maybe, either? Maybe, maybe no flak either, bro. Maybe, they got hit by multiple nades. They probably they had flak. Yeah, they got double oh, nade. Maybe, okay. maybe Kenny was single nading it um, before, but they ended up double nading this round. Either way, it was, just, it was a good blind counter. 
I mean, the thing is, though, it's like you can't run every single strat off of like having trophies or not. Like, it's just not like a like if you're gonna do that, like you're just, just not gonna have a lot of variants. It's a fifty fifty. Whether they uh, whether they naded through dreams because they were throwing those dreams nades a lot, like from low exactly, park line yeah. to the terminal cross. So they just yeah. Yeah, it you, happened you to be the round they triple hit book. Yeah, it's just it's just a blind counter. And like, then we get to the control, and I'm like, fuck, man, uh, Optic Texas get a clean four dead here. They already have one tick. They four stack. They sorry. They three stack the point. I'm thinking this is fucking chalk. But look at how this unfolds. I mean, this was and a Bruce crazy ending. In fucking hell. Bruce spawns in hell. He can't get there in time to help. The phase boys are desperately trying to get in there. That team kill from it, I think, was big. But it's also a cluster fuck. So yeah, he back, clearly back did. Up, it was AG. Were they like Eiffel towering, and then he just stood up and got fucking boobobbed? Uh, I don't think what? the team kill really matters that much. To be really? honest, really, I thought it mattered. I too. don't. I don't think it. Like, I think the tr the trades still go the way that. They but I don't anyway. think it was like a bad team. Cause I just think they're one shot. Yeah, it, I think it was like, unfortunate, it, it was but I don't think it's like. You know what I mean? Brother, I think I, they still lose the trades. I hate this game. Yeah, what were they doing? That's ben? exactly what happened. No, a Ag was lying down and stood up, and that's why. Info I hate the inconsistency of this yeah. game. Why the fuck does Brandon yeah. spawn deep left, yeah, right, and then ben. the rest yeah. of his team spawns on that's the American like the American flag like. Like, see how number five and them are all spawning there? Bruce is the only one that spawned deep left, and then they all started spawning there. I, and maybe it's, phase, I don't phase know why they did that. Phase go massive here at the end, too, because uh, it, they only have four lives, and they end up winning every fucking fight he's, here. He just spawned ice cream now. Like, dude. Yeah. No, he's losing fucking why does Why is he the only one spawning far? Yeah. Like, you can see Atlanta stinks. Phase. They don't have any lives, but there's no time left on the clock, and they're able to get it. Pat, you want me to back it up? He just wants to see yeah, the spawns. Right like, before where he spawned. <clears throat> There's there just is. no consistency, bro. Like it's yeah, just, map he spawns there when his team's already pushed up the street, and then you'll see his teammates as they die. They start spawning where Bruce is now, and then Bruce is gonna die where later. Did, and can you back it up to where they got that American flag? Like the last player to get that American flag. The American spawn. flag. You'll see. I mean, you're, yeah, you're gonna see it happen after the trades happen. It happens after kills. the trades. You're gonna see Brand spawn. Yeah. Just keep watching. Okay. Just before Brennan spawns. This though. is, I mean, this just doesn't make sense. Like, regardless, like how this these guys spawn here, but then you're gonna watch Bruce later. He spawns ice cream instead of at the fortress for no reason. Mm -hmm. It's just look at the, here's an American guy, another yeah. American guy, and then you're gonna see Bruce spawn fucking ice cream. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Why does he not spawn? Got, he just got the bad RNG, Chris. I know, but yeah. like, why? Brandon, it's, Brandon, look at this I shit. Like, look at it, brother. Why? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> what is the fucking point? <laughs> Pat, would that happen next to Vlad? No, absolutely not. But I'm wondering if I'm wondering if it like went on. So you know how we're talking about the cooldown thing? Like, he got that ice cream spawn right after three of his teammates got the American spawn. And the reason I wanted you to back it up before Brandon spawned was to see if, like, three of his teammates had spawned there prior and he was just, like, the fourth one and there just wasn't a spawn available. Mm. I feel like that cooldown would be long as fuck, no? I just hate I mean, it, bro. It's, like, it's, I don't it's they got, they, they how triple spawned American and then a couple seconds pass and then Brandon I just, I just think I mean, but they could set that time to whatever they want. Cool right? down, like, it could be bro, five like, seconds. It could be ten it seconds. Shouldn't, it, it shouldn't fucking exist. Like, there's they no don't want you to get spawn trapped. There's, no, there's something about optic and spawns on that map that just There is sucks. zero reason as to like why that should be a thing. I don't care if they don't want you to get spawn trapped. That's just dumb logic. And you can't control it as a player. You're just at the mercy of the game. It just sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you go beyond Karachi and you spawn Coop instead of behind the bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we go into the Skid Row hard point. This was Optics pick. I was worried going into this map because I, I know this is Optics bread and butter, but FaZe did not disappoint here. They showed up. We had a listen here, and I thought the listening was great, so let's turn into Atlanta FaZe. Three, I want 
Two there. Missing right now. I'm new. I'm new. I'm new. I'm missing Kenny. We're missing Kenny. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this. Hold on. 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 Listen, hold on, 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 hold Oh, he goes at the end of the list and he's like, I'm going to play this old. Just like three pieces of them for 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Just like without saying it. Like, <laughs> he was just on something different. It was all him, dude. I'm, that just, whole map was I'm just thinking about Dumpy, bro. What? <laughs> you think about what? Uh, and then we hop into the, the, the last hill here. I mean, this is a top. This is Optic's got a 20, 30 point lead. They got a 30 point lead going into the P5. Phase decide to chalk everything up and rotate, and I love the play from Zach here. Draza, he is not scared to chow, and that's what I love about him. I thought he was going to stay down. This is and what kinda... I was begging for. Yeah, Draza, I thought he was going to stay down because they were putting bullets into him, but he doesn't care. He knows he has the power position. He's got a trophy down on him. He does not uh, hesitate to, to chow, and he continues to chow here as well. He's, he's not scared. He knows his team has the tunnel spawns, and, and they're looking over to cross. Um, and he does a great job just staying alive, switching up his lanes. And I think at this point, it was all over. FaZe had him funnel ticket. They were blocking the tunnel spawns. You can see those back alley spawns just keep coming in from Optic. And, and all Atlanta FaZe need to do is keep throwing trophies down and holding this cross here. Uh, Man, they're trolling, bro. They're just trying to force it. Shotzi's trying to fucking j d dolphin dive across the fucking air. You don't, you can't. I respect the effort. But it's just a really hard. I mean, there's not much you can do on this setup. You just got to have to try and do some crazy shit and, and win some crazy fights. But FaZe, uh, they do a good job just locking this down. Uh, Imagine they had a smoke, the though. Smoked across. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Uh, the smoke would it would definitely uh, be different there. Uh, it, 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 this game would play way different if there was a smoke. It would, it would be insanely different. I think, people, I think people would play like the – they'd play more the backside of the hill and double stack it so you just see people run through the smoke. They're just watching the cross at that point. Yeah, and then honestly, for the last map, Rio, I didn't have many clips. I was so locked into it. I, I think one takeaway from it is, um, I mean, Ant had a good map, but I felt like that that optic in general just kept getting uh, blooded. Uh, there was a lot of rounds where FaZe were just getting first bloods, and uh, there wasn't really too much, or, or there wasn't any trades coming in from optic. Like there, like even right there, right? AG's trying to push you. He goes down, and and nobody's there. Like AG's by himself hitting mid. They don't have a lot of double chow mid strats. We saw a couple of rounds, Tom, where like uh, offensive strats for optic, where where they're all playing their spawn side, and then Shotzi's just trying to dive out middle finesse to get a bomb down uh, quick. Like I don't know. I would like I to see that gang up a little more. I think his teammates kind of him right there a yeah, little bit. Yeah, the troll like, saying earlier. Whether he was going rogue for the plant by himself yeah. or whether his teammates like didn't help him. Um, but there was like, I think, seven or eight uh, consecutive offensive round wins on this map. So yeah. uh, FaZe was the, the first team to win a defense here and get a lead going. But uh, I think AG kind of had a tough map. There was a couple of first blood situations where he, he kind of threw his life away. Uh, same with Ant to, to start the map. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the winning moment here when Atlanta FaZe was able to get the, another championship under their belts. It's another one tallied uh, to the organization. And, uh, you know, as a FaZe fan, I couldn't be more happier for the guys. I know they've gone through through a lot of shit. A lot of people talk shit about them. They get booed every time they get on stage. Uh, and they've been getting a lot of second places. And a lot of people just keep saying silver surfers and, and writing them off. You got Reddit posts about Crowder and you got people talking about the coaching and bam, Wait, bang, Reddit boom. about Crowder? Uh, they, they were obsessed. Yeah, they're we're always... Chris is a fraud. They, they, they also lost to LAG and everyone was freaking the fuck out. Yeah, you have Nameless texting people saying fucking Phaser, this is unacceptable. This is like, this should never happen. They gotta have to do something. But just I just felt like a lot of people were just... Writing them off when I just feel like it's you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. They they have an average placing of what top three? Uh, the last what? Three years? Two years? Some, uh, some it, it's uh, it's, years? it's 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 on uh, the level they've been together and for how long? It's it's unprecedented. The God. fact that people even just expect them to win yeah. like all the time is just stupid. So yeah, I just think I just think they really really deserve this win, and I couldn't be happier for them. You got you got Crowder up there, Coach RJ. 
Um, uh, Tupac, you got Kaysen up there, you got Tucker in the back. Uh, it was just cool to see them lift a trophy. We finally got a trophy, and it's a very beautiful trophy as well. Bigger than Chris. Yeah, beautiful trophy, and uh, just a, just a crazy, crazy event. Uh, great, great weekend. Um, I definitely think FaZe and Optic looked like the two best teams on the weekend, without a doubt. Not just because they were in the grand final, just throughout the weekend, I thought they looked like the best, even from start to finish, before they even got there. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how everybody adapts going home. We had Toronto win Major 1. Then you had, like, FaZe and Optic kind of sneak in there. They've been adapting. Now, they look really good. Now, I think we expect New York to start, uh, you know, start maybe fighting for these chips, maybe getting a grand final. I mean, these top four teams are going to be battling well, Tom, this year. Well, Tom, speaking of FaZe, you know who their second, third, and fourth matches are this season? Uh, or no. this next play? Uh, well, they play Rocker first, whatever. Okay. Then they play Optic, Toronto, and New York. So oh, you're going to see FaZe playing some top four teams the first couple of weeks after this break. That's crazy. They, they play literally the other top, yeah, the, the, they, the top they, three teams. They play Vegas, Carolina, and Seattle, but, you know. Yeah. But, guys, it's been a great weekend. That's going to be it for all the matches. I mean, Ben, if you want to hit us out with a fucking putt and close us out, I mean, guys, get your channel point predictions. And, Ben, he's been uh, he's been a little shaky. A little, he, he, he hit I one putt. I hit the, I hit the, wait, 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 the I have a question. One. I have a question. Yeah. Right before, I want to know, before Major 3 starts, who you guys have winning Major 3? I want you calling it what? now before we see any games. Who do you have winning major three, Tom? Face, back to back. Go fuck Faze. yourself. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I might go Toronto. Wait, sorry, what's going on? Chris, who do you have winning major <laughs> Yo, three? Chris literally blacked out. Black I looked over out. at him and he blacked out. It's I been did, a long day, bro. Out. Who do you have winning major three? <laughs> Face. All right, I got Toronto. What the go fuck? Bad, what is that you. buzzing noise? I don't know, but it's either way, it's just... It, Either way, bro, it's just we don't even know, bro. We're gonna have a complete map. We're gonna have yeah, a complete different map pool, line, like yeah. probably. That's that's why we're that's why we're predicting now. It's literally just gambling at this point. Who Hit adapts the quicker? Fucking pop, Ben. Let's Spend see what Ben J can do, ladies and gentlemen. He's stepping wait, wait, up. Wait, Tom, can you have him back it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he's good. He's, he's, he's deep. He's deep. I said Toronto. He's good. He's good. No, no, a little he's bit more. Up. Take one step back. Take one step back. Right there. Boom. Right there. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's a long pot. It's like a fucking seven footer. You got that. What do you think it is? Ben thinks this is like a fifteen fucking foot putt here. Nah, nah. But it's championship Sunday. Hit the fucking pot. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is he doing? What the fuck is he doing? He's bro? trying to measure it out, dude. All right, Ben's guy, five foot nothing. Win. So yeah. Nah, oh, Jesus five fucking foot Christ, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ben Jane Seam like stepping up to eight, the plate. Eight or nine, That's a five maybe. Foot He's gonna line it up. He doesn't have his slippies on. Is it going to affect him here? A lot of channel points are coming in on a miss. And he goes wide. And he's not even fucking close. <laughs> Jesus Oh, Christ. Jesus. So we can confirm liner, he cheated bro. yesterday. Yeah. That's a liar, and it's bro. Not <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even fucking close, folks. Benjamin That's a liner. Failing the parts. And he falls a little short there. That's basically, he basically makes that putt. That's a real hole that goes in. But it's too late. You failed, Ben. It's okay. It happens. Ladies and gentlemen, there was 25 million channel points on him missing. You guys are eating good tonight, folks. You're eating good. <laughs> okay. But, guys, before we head out, first and foremost, I want to show a huge shout-out to the panel, Chris, Ben, Sam, and Pat. It's been a long weekend. We've uh, we've been watch partying. We've been hanging out. We've been having a good time. And uh, I, I really appreciate you guys. So, thank wait, you guys wait, so wait, much. Wait, wait. Can I make full? I'm, I'm in the not, middle of like. I want, you know, I, want you to, I want you to watch something. I want you to watch something. We're being wholesome right now, Ben. I'm just being so wholesome. Nah. I was about to go so wholesome. Nah, nah. You, click, click this. He's gonna chat. have you watch the bullshit. Watch. Nah, I need, ben, I need, by the way, you ended this stage at 75 percent putting. This bro linked the bullshit. That's pretty good. Bro, bro, Ben, what are you linking me, Ben? I can't even fucking. All right, I'll show you after this stream. Thank though, you, man. motherfucker. Ben's got me checked out, linking <laughs> me this dog shit ass sport. <laughs> but Damn. guys, uh, yet again, I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Xfinity, the fastest, most reliable internet, best in the business. Give it up for Xfinity, folks, and show them some love because yet again, can't stress it enough, we would not be here without Xfinity, bro. They helped us out a ton. And I can't thank them enough. So, shoe shout out to them. Huge shout out to FaZe Clan. They've supported me with everything with the merch drop this weekend and the streams. FaZe Clan always got my back. So, huge, uh, huge shout out to FaZe. 
Zach Catterall, uh, Eric Anderson, Pepsi, huge shout-out to them. Uh, the embassy in Fort Lauderdale, they were a great host for us. Uh, uh, Renaissance oh. in Fort Lauderdale. So yep, yep, yep. The, and then, uh, yep, and in the hotel as well, shout-out to the Renaissance here in Fort Lauderdale. They were phenomenal all weekend long. I mean, they were literally bringing us food and stuff and yeah. drinks, and the service was incredible. So huge shout-out to the to the hotel for letting us uh, have the space. And, uh, and guys, huge shout-out. To you guys, man. You guys are absolutely incredible, bro. The energy in the streams this weekend was fucking insane. Both in the watch parties, the shows, everything, bro. The IRL stream. I did an IRL stream. It's uploaded on the Zuma Live. You want to check it out. But just everything was fucking crazy this weekend. And I, I really can't thank you guys enough, bro. It's a long weekend. And I know we're sitting on the couch, but it gets really grueling. And it's really long days. And I don't think if I had the energy in the chat, bro, I, I don't know if I'd be able to make it, bro. You guys literally make my job so much easier. And I fucking love you guys. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Best community in the world, bro. So show yourself some love. And huge congratulations again to Atlanta Faze, Paul Hamilton, and, and all those guys down there. Obviously, we were rooting for the guys all weekend. So for them to get that W was uh, was awesome, man. That was a nice cherry on top. Faze Black also got second place in Challenger. So I was really happy with Faze Black. They made a run. And if they're going to lose, they lost to the Wood Chippers. They lost to Gunless and Classic. They lost to some of our friends. And, uh, you know, I thought Faze Black looked really good as well oh, today. So, so, the Faze Reaper, man. The Faze Reaper, man. Nagola. Classic. You know how it gets. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching this week, and we hope you guys all enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites we're on. Go follow at the flankers. Doing a phenomenal job running socials. And that is always zuma.gg to check out any merch that's available, guys. As always, take care. Brush your hair. Take it easy. And we'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Flank. Take care, Yo. guys. Uh, womp, womp, not again. Womp, 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 oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs>